Hello and welcome to the Movie Thoughts Podcast. I am your host, Dominic Tartamella. And as you can hear in the background, if you don't hear the whip, whoops, I hate snakes. This is an Indiana Jones-centric episode. And uh, yeah, because Dial uh, of Destiny, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is coming out next week. And what better time to revisit the classic Indiana Jones films, the four Indiana Jones films. Now, some people like to pretend there's just three Indiana Jones films. There's four Indiana Jones films. Love them or hate them, whichever ones you don't like. Specifically, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We'll get to it. But because this is, uh, you know, the 50 Indiana Jones movies coming out, Harrison Ford's what? 80, 80 something years old. How old is Harrison Ford now? Let's let's just double check so I'm not exaggerating. Harrison Ford at the time of this movie's release is 80 years old. Okay. Um, Dial of Destiny, uh, as I said, coming out next week. I'm a big Indiana Jones fan, as you could tell. Um, I'm wearing my fedora cap right now, and I'm I'm, I'm fully dressed in the Indiana Jones getup, and. It's been getting some lukewarm reception. If you look around, not that I take reviews that seriously and stuff like that, but it's been getting some lukewarm stuff. I'm going to go. I'm going to judge it myself, right? we got James Mangold directing it. Uh, he's done movies like Logan, obviously. Uh, you know, the last, what are you, the Ford versus Ferrari. He's done a slew of movies, and he's a great director, and I have faith in James Mangold. So hopefully I'm pleasantly surprised. But as it is the fifth and final Indiana Jones movie, because let's face it, it's the it's the final movie. I mean, you could have said that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was the final, but this one, especially with Harrison Ford's age, you know, the, the time, the limitations, listen, they're de-aging him in this one for a nice chunk of this one, apparently. Because, you know, this guy's old. What is he going to do? He can't run around. He can't roll in the dirt and shit like that and be crawling into tombs forever, right? So he's hanging up the whip. He's hanging up the hat. Uh, Disney is obviously distributing this one now. But so as it is the last one, I figured, like, let's let's drag this out a little bit. So I'm going to do I'm going to talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark today. I'm going to talk about the first one in the series. And then hopefully I'm going to try to do the other three. I can't guarantee that I'll actually get them done. In the next week, but I'm going to try to do uh, the next three. But yeah, I just rewatched Raiders of the Lost Ark, and what is not to love about this film, right? I mean, 1981 is, is the year it's released. It's directed by Steven Spielberg. It's written by Lawrence Kasdan, who, uh, you know, obviously co-wrote, or I, he co-wrote Empire Strikes Back, and he also co-wrote, I believe, Return of the Jedi, Uh, They also brought him back to do um, The Force Awakens, and he was also involved with his son in the Han Solo film, which doesn't get enough respect. Kind of feels a little bit Indiana Jones-esque at time. But yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the introduction to the character uh, of Indiana Jones, you know, Um, Harrison Ford, fucking charming as fuck. I mean... This is like, this is what cements Harrison Ford as a movie star. You know, he does, you know, movies like American Graffiti. Uh, You know, he popped up, obviously, as Han Solo, you know, having this iconic character. And then when he does Indiana Jones, this this cements it, right? This cements Harrison Ford as the, the lovable fucking movie star that we all know and love, right? Because after this, then it's just, I mean, then he does Blade Runner after this. He comes back in Return of the Jedi. He does another Indiana Jones. And then it's, that's it. Then the movies just start and he becomes his household name, right? Uh, Start as a carpenter, apparently, Harrison Ford. So he, he turned to acting, you know, he, he was a regular working guy and he, he became this famous fucking actor, but Indiana Jones, an iconic character, that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg came up with. I think they wanted to do, like, a James Bond movie. Uh, They were both, like, James Bond fans, and instead of doing that, they came up with their own character, right? And this is, back in the day, this movie was just called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Nowadays, uh, I mean, actually, they've gotten a little better in recent years. They started just calling it Raiders of the Lost Ark, but I remember when it came out on DVD in the early 2000s, like the box sets and stuff, 
they they retitled the first one Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like that was on a lot of the covers, which I don't like it. I want it to be. I think I even have an older Blu-ray that says Indiana Jones. I got to double check that, but I am looking at them from a distance right now. Uh, that says Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, but it's not. It's Raiders of the Lost Ark because at this point, Indiana Jones wasn't the household name, uh, you know, that he would become, and then later sequels he would have the title, right? Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and of course, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But this movie uh, is just uh, so much fun. So much fun as far as just like action, nonstop action, uh, a nice amount of humor, you know, some scary stuff in there. I mean, this was 81, as I said, um, and and they could get away with a lot of shit, right? For This movie was ra- originally rated PG, there's definitely some, you know, action, some violence here. There's some scary stuff that happens at the end. We know what it is. But overall, just a fun movie. Uh, just, as I said, nonstop action just keeps going. And that's one of the things that uh, never ceases to amaze me when I rewatch this movie because of how, like, you get your story. Obviously, you're getting your dialogue. But there's just scene after scene of, like, right when, you know they get all that stuff out of the way, there's another scene of action. There's another scene of action. There's another scene of action. And it's 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 relentless in that way. And that's the great thing about Indiana Jones, right? Like, there's not a lot of movies that, you know, there's plenty of action movies and adventure movies, but not a lot of movies that just do it so well. Uh, you know, obviously they were basing it on, like, serials of their time that Lucas and Spielberg and Kasdan all knew. So, like, it takes a lot from that with the action, but a lot of, like, happy accidents in there, too. I mean, there's the classic sword scene uh, where the swordsman throwing his fucking sword around and Indiana Jones pulls out his gun and shoots him, right? That, if legend is true, was because Harrison Ford was sick that day and there was supposed to be, like, this big fight scene. And Harrison Ford, I don't know if he ate something or he drank something that got him sick. He had the shits. I don't know what the case was. But he literally was like got the idea of like pull out the gun and, and shoot them. And it's fucking – it works so well. It's like such a classic scene. It's still funny to this day. Um, but yeah, also great supporting cast in this movie. I mean let's talk about him, right? Let's talk about the – Indiana Jones cast. You get Karen Allen as Marion, and she's great. She later returns in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. There's also rumors that she's in the fucking new one, I'm sure. To some degree, she's probably in it. Uh, We'll see. Uh, But she's great. You know, they kind of listen. Some people knock it now. They kind of make it like, oh, this relationship of uh, Indiana Jones and and, and Marion is something going on there where maybe she was too young. She even refers at one point where she's like, oh, I was a child and stuff like that. And, you know, he was a teacher, professor. So maybe it's a little weird. But, all right, first of all, let me get this out of the way. It's a fucking movie. That's, first of all, these characters don't exist, right? Not that I condone underage, you know, uh, the shenanigans of that nature and, 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 and you know, what's wrong nowadays is wrong. Uh, you know, even like a teacher. I don't even know why I'm getting into this. Because yet again, these are fictional characters. But let's let's just stop it. Because this movie, first of all, not only is it from the 80s, but it's set in 1936. So like, whatever went down with Indiana Jones and Mary, and I, th- th- those were different fucking times. I don't think we should really get lost in there. And, you know, start calling Indiana Jones a fucking pervert or anything like that. Whatever. But that's neither here nor there. I don't know why I had to go on that tangent. Then you get Paul Freeman as Belloc, who's just a fucking... You want to punch him in the fucking head, right? Great villain. Uh, gets his gets his just desserts later on. Uh, but he plays a good role. There's also the scene of him swallowing the fly halfway through. Uh, but towards the end of the movie, uh, you know, I don't know. He's when When Indiana Jones has the bazooka or the grenade launch or whatever you want to call it pulled on them when he's going to blow up the ark. And you see a fly go into his mouth. And I don't know. Is it, is it is it editing? Did he really swallow that fly? Then you get fucking John Ray's Davies as Sala, who is fucking great. 
I mean, you, you got to love Sala. Such a great character, and this actor's so great. Obviously, he's been in the Lord of the Rings movies, too. He's He returned in um, The Last Crusade, and he's popping up again in this newest one. So I'm excited for that, because he was not in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So he had that lacking, uh, you know, Sala. But then you get Ronald Lacey as Tot, and he's just a fucking Nazi guy, and he burns his hand, and all this classic imagery. And yeah, this is an all-star cast, man. This is a fun movie right from the beginning. Obviously, you know, it's, it's become so the imagery of this movie, even if you haven't seen Indiana Jones, which I don't know what the fuck you're doing if you haven't seen any of the Indiana Joneses, but like, you know these images, right? You know him running away from the big boulder in the beginning of the movie. Uh, if you've been to the fucking Disney uh, stunt show of Indiana Jones, it's been going, I think it's still going on. The last time I was there, I think it was still going on. But I love that fucking thing. They have the boulder rolling and stuff like that. It's just fun. It's just fun. I wish I could get a job in the Indiana Jones stunt show and be uh, a chubby Italian Indiana Jones. I would definitely get crushed by the ball more than once. But <laughs> then you get, listen, if you watch this movie closely in the very beginning, you get an appearance by Alfred Molina. Fucking Doc Ock himself in one of his first roles. He gets covered in spiders at one point. I think I watched an interview with him talking about that. Those are real, real spiders. And that's the thing with this movie. Practical fucking effects. They're beautiful. Uh, just the, 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 you know, it's, it. listen, I get it nowadays, you know, especially with a, a lot of this stuff. They film it, uh, you know, on a green screen. Or now this new thing, what is it called? The fucking, I'm forgetting what it's called whatever the thing that like Mandalorian uses and stuff like that where the backgrounds they put you in any setting it's all great it's all cool but there's something that I feel like your eyes notice right when you're watching stuff like this and you see what is it called the volume or something like that it's called whatever the hell it's called you see when something's really not there and this is the type of movie where it's all sets man like even that scene in the beginning when he's when he's taking the golden idol and, and the fucking ball comes like it's, this is all sets that are built on stages and everything looks great everything looks lived in and really looks like a tomb and it's just great and there's always that feeling as i said like the action is just non-stop there's always that feeling of like oh he's safe oh my god he's in danger oh my god he's safe oh my god he's in danger there's constantly you know whether it's as I said, the beginning, fucking he, he, the Doc Ock over there takes his fucking whip and throws it away. Just great. Great stuff. Nonstop action. And of course, the fucking ending, right? I mean, spoilers, but the fucking Ark of Covenant, uh, you know, they're trying to get it. They're having this kind of tug of war back and forth. And finally, the Nazis, the bad guys, Belloc, they end up with the Ark of the Covenant and they fucking open that shit. And it's fucked up what happens. Effects that, listen, they're a little dated now. Um, you know, they're not perfect, but they, they still fucking hold up. They still hold up. For 1981, uh, I would take this and these kind of effects any day versus just computer stuff. And then, listen, I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, CGI and shit like that. Shit. CGI is great. CGI, especially when it's done right, it's amazing. My problem with CGI is just, like, they overdo it sometimes where they don't use any practical stuff. Like, yeah, if you did this scene over today and you used a lot of the practical elements, but then you used, you know, some of the CGI stuff to maybe show some of the ghosts and the and the magic flying around, that will work. But that's not how they do it. They would just fucking overdo the CGI. But this scene, just the practical effects, the fucking, it's creepy still. Even when the ghost comes, it's like, like I said, it looks a little cheesy at times, but it's still creepy. The light shooting out of everybody's eyes and, and the fucking face melting. You can't beat that. The face melting, Belog's head exploding, uh, but the Nazi's face melting is classic. It's like a fucking, I was watching how they did that. I don't know if they've recreated it on something. I gotta go through the bonus features. On the on the Blu-ray and 4K or whatever, uh, because they they definitely watched something where they recreated the head melting scene, which is fucking awesome. I also saw there's like a candle you could get. I don't think it's officially released, but like somebody maybe on Etsy or something sells a candle of the guy's face, and you could like it melts. It's amazing. It's just amazing. I just love this movie. A lot of fun. Um, just a great debut for the Indiana Jones character. And listen, like I wish. There was as many 
Indiana Jones movies as there was like James Bond movies. But unfortunately, it didn't work out like that, right? You had a big gap in between uh, The Last Crusade and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Because I think we were pretty much done. I mean, that was really... The trilogy was done for a long time. When was Last Crusade? Last Crusade was in 89. And then Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was in, like... If I had to guess off the top of my head. Let me just check it, because I got it all pulled up. 2008. So you had a big fucking gap. Um, you know, where you didn't get Indiana Jones. Obviously, you had the young Indiana Jones stuff. Which I- I'm not really going to get into. I mean... Some of it's good, some of it's better than others. There's an episode where Harrison Ford actually pops up as Indiana Jones. It's pretty cool. If I'll ever talk about any of that show, I'll probably talk about that episode. But yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, man. Fucking classic. Uh, just relentless. You know, the, the helicopter scene with the when he's fighting the big guy, it just goes on, goes on, goes on. Just build suspense. Like, perfect. Like, if every action adventure movie could be like this, it's, it's what every action movie tries to be uh you know just what a great pace what is it like just, i think it's like just under two hours raises the lowest arc and it's a lot of fun there's also a lot of indiana jones toys coming out now which i may or may not have purchased most of them yeah they're in my apartment yeah i'm looking at some of them right now they're great it's harrison ford who doesn't want fucking harrison ford in an action figure in multiple kinds of action figures han solo uh, maybe Deckard from Blade Runner, and and now Indiana Jones. It's just great. Complete the circle, right? <laughs> A bunch of stuff. But yeah, Steven Spielberg, really, this is when Steven Spielberg, too, like, you could go um, and say Steven Spielberg's, like, overrated or whatever, but this guy, as a fucking director, is so versatile. I mean, like, and, you know, he branched out, obviously, over the years, and he ended up doing, like, Schindler's List because he didn't want to, like be known as just like this popcorn kind of movie maker so he did his year but he could do anything steven spielberg i mean from indiana jones jaws et uh just a a slew of his newer movies you know even he just he just does a great fucking job i mean anything he does he could do comedy he could do more serious things he's just such a great filmmaker Uh, you know his newest film the fablemans which was you know based on his life Uh, is good as well you know he could do something like that a little more sentimental gotta love him gotta love steven spielberg gotta love indiana jones but yeah i'm fucking sad that you know harrison ford this this will probably be his last uh as far as dial of destiny goes i'm gonna be seeing it next week so i'm definitely gonna do more of these episodes as i said i'm gonna try to get through all four it's kind of gonna be a shorter little episode trying a little something different you know, I was gonna, I was gonna just talk about them all together, uh, but I said, you know what? Let me just do a little, little kind of like twenty-minute episodes where I talk about the each film and how I feel about them. As far as Raiders of the Lost Ark, though, probably is it the best in the series? That's the question. Um, we'll do a little bit of a ranking too. I'm not gonna say that this is my favorite in the series. This is probably my second favorite. We'll we'll leave it at that. And as we go on, we'll talk about the others. But Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, fun time to revisit it. You know, uh, just great. This is, I mean, all four uh, that we're going to talk about, obviously directed by Steven Spielberg. So now the, the odd man out is now this newest one which uh, James Mangold's directing, so it's a little bit different. You know, it's a little bit different. We didn't get Spielberg. I'm surprised Spielberg didn't do this, especially how, like, this is going to be the final one. But I guess, you know what, he probably looks at it like, listen, I got a lot of fucking backlash for Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. He's probably like, fuck you all. Fuck you all. Let somebody else take it. My my name's still on the credits, still my character with George Lucas. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Is there a future? I mean, is there a future for Indiana Jones outside of Harrison Ford? Who fucking knows? But yeah, that's pretty much the episode. Can't stress it enough. If you've never seen this movie, definitely check it out. I'm excited to uh, delve into Dial uh, of Destiny. The, the Dial of Destiny, rather. Next week, Mads Mikkelsen, all that fun stuff. Uh, but we'll see. I'm going to get to... I'll do Temple of Doom next. Maybe have that out by like Sunday or something like that, and then we'll try we'll try to do the other two. That's what we're doing. 
But yeah, that's the podcast. Check out the other episodes. Uh, check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Dom Solo Reels. If you like the podcast and this is the first time you're listening, uh, you know, subscribe, rate, review, all that shit. I don't know. I think I might be back later, um, depending upon when I drop it, I guess. With I'm going to go check out that Asteroid City, uh, the Wes Anderson movie. I'm going to try to check it out later. So that will be posted soon as well. And I guess that's it. Have a good day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Movie Thoughts. I'm your host, Dominic Tartamella, and we are in the full swing of of Indiana Jones anticipation, right? Because the fifth and final Indiana Jones film opens up next week, The Dial of Destiny. This is it. This is it, folks. Harrison Ford's 80 years old. Uh, this is probably going to be the last Indiana Jones. Uh, this is the first one after, you know, Disney has acquired the film rights. So uh, people are anticipating, right? There's been some uh, word of mouth. It wasn't getting the best word of mouth, but I'm not going to fucking let that affect my opinion of the movie. I'm going to go see this fucking thing and hopefully I enjoy it. But uh, in honor of the Indiana Jones movies, in honor of this being the final one coming out, I figured let's get in to the Indiana Jones franchise. So a couple of episodes ago, I talked a little bit about Raiders of the Lost Ark, the original, the one that started it all for Indiana Jones, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, Harrison Ford, uh, and all that fun stuff. And now we're talking about the follow-up. We're talking about Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, uh, a film that has <laughs> got a lot going on in it. Uh, to say the least, right? So now Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is uh, the first movie to put the title Indiana Jones and the, right? And this would obviously go on to be the thing. I talked about in the last episode in future DVD releases, they started calling Raiders of the Lost Ark Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, which isn't really accurate. I'm glad they're kind of going back to the original. Now, when you pick up the movie, a lot of time, it does say Raiders of the Lost Ark above all else. I mean, they never altered the title or anything in the actual movie, but just box art and shit like that. But yeah, Temple of fucking Doom. Now, the interesting thing about this film is that it is a prequel. This is something that slips under the radar if you're not somebody who pays attention to the years and stuff, because they don't, they don't, you know, outright announce that it's a prequel. Uh, But if you go off, you know, the year that Raiders of the Lost Ark opens at, and if you go off the year that this opens up at, it's before Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, uh, the main reason they did this uh, from Steven Spielberg and George Lucas's perspective was that they did not want the Nazis to be the villains again, which I get. Uh, it's one of those things, it's kind of like silly. I mean, when I watch the Indiana Jones movies, uh, I watch them in release order. I watch Raiders, I watch Temple, Last Crusade, and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, uh, when I, when I'm able to, (laughs) when I'm able to stomach it. But, uh, this, this was, so it's not really like, it doesn't change much. I mean, I don't, I think maybe one time I tried to watch Temple of Doom first, and it just it just doesn't feel right because this is the second movie. You know, there's, there's I talked about the sword scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's even a callback to that, which is like it being a prequel wouldn't make any sense. But whatever, it's it's all bullshit. It's because, as I said, they didn't want the Nazis to be the villains. Uh, you're also getting a more like pessimistic Indiana Jones in this. He's a little bit more for himself and shit like that. But this movie opens fucking great. I mean, he's doing a fucking deal. Um, he he's fucking wearing a, a white fucking suit, and he's fucking. It, it's just like they had to top the boulder scene uh, and the tomb scene, for, you know, from the original. So they have this, right? It opens up with a musical number, anything goes, all that shit. And then we get down to the action. Indiana Jones is is having a back and forth, and he's fucking, a deal goes to shit. 
He ha- he drinks poison. He's running around. He fucking kidnaps um, Kate Capshaw's character, right? And he's fucking running around with her. Now, Kate Capshaw, uh, who plays Willie Scott, was... Uh, I, th- I think she started dating Steven Spielberg this time. And they later got married. And listen... Uh, she's, she's a bit annoying. All right. Let's, let's face it. She's been annoying. I, I think she's doing the job that she was hired for. I just feel like she's a little bit much. She screams throughout this fucking movie all the time. And this is one of those things. Listen, we all, as movie fans, we all have those little pet peeves of movies that when we kind of get in the mood to watch them and maybe something that gets us in the mood or something that kind of turns us off and says, eh, I don't feel like fucking watching it. <sighs> she's been, I hate to say it, but she's she's a little bit of the reason sometimes why I don't watch this movie. I mean, it, it, because just the screaming and, if, and, and the fucking the food scene that comes later, which we'll get to, but... Um, you know, she's like I said, she's doing. She's not the worst. She's not like she's a bad actress. The character's just fucking annoying, and I, I guess that's her job. You know, she's kind of the polar opposite of Marion uh, in the first one, and and I guess that's the point, right? At this point, too, they wanted to kind of do like Indiana Jones. You know, as he was inspired by James Bond, they kind of wanted to do him. Uh, you know, having a different girl in every movie, and that that goes to work. Obviously, Marion comes into play later on but uh in in the fourth one but you know we'll get to that when we get to that but yeah this fucking opening scene is great like i said a lot of action a lot of back and forth uh sets the tone for the rest of the movie uh the, like i said the antidote the anecdote what the fuck uh, the antidote anecdote what the fuck am i saying the antidote scene uh great you know Indiana Jones punches a fucking girl at one point in his, like, chaos of being poisoned, and he kills a bunch of people. He throws a fucking, like, shish kebab thing through some guy's chest. It's a, it's, it sets the tone. As I said, you get a little, you get a little, uh, the, the Easter egg in there, Club Obi-Wan, and then you meet Short Round, right? Now, Short Round is, um, <laughs> he's played by Ki Hu Kwan, who is also known for the Goonies. And he was just recently in uh, the movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which I thought was fucking overrated, and I really didn't like. But he was fun in it, and he won a fucking Oscar, so good for him. I'm happy for him, because the guy's been around for a long time, and he's fucking great in this movie. Short Round is such a fun character. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Short Round, from what I've heard, haven't been delving into spoilers of Dial of Destiny, but he is not in that movie in no capacity. There's been like kind of like an online campaign to try to say like that some fan art make, made and stuff that like Short Round should get his own spin-off continuing the Indiana Jones series and like a t- television show, a Disney Plus show and I, I'm down for it. I'm down for Short Round to make his triumphant return because he has the the history there. We've seen him in a movie. We can see him as a grown man now and see how he is, see how Indiana Jones affected his life. You could add some stuff to the mythology, but I'm down if they do it. I don't know if they're going to do it. Uh, but yeah, a couple things. As I said, he's good. He works. His humor works. You know, no no time for love, Dr. Jones. I'm not going to do the accent because maybe some people will be offended if I do the accent. <laughs> I don't really give a shit if you're offended. But uh, just a fun side character. Probably, you know, this is the thing. I don't want to get into Kingdom with Crystal Skull. But like this character just works so much better than, let's say, a Mutt Williams, right? Uh, Shia LaBeouf. And I, I didn't hate Shia LaBeouf in that movie, but uh, as I said, we'll, we'll try, let me stick to this one. Now, the food fucking scene, the scene when they're eating the fucking sn- the, the snake inside snakes and fucking monkey brains. Yet again, another reason why I don't watch this movie all the time is just thinking about that scene. It's fucking gross. Uh, the gross imagery, it's funny, but it, it's, it's disgusting. It's what, this is one of those notorious scenes that just lives in your brain. And as I said, doesn't exactly get you in the mood to watch this movie. When you think about that scene, Harrison Ford in this fucking movie, he had a, a back injury. I believe we had to have like a, I don't know if it was a hernia. He had to have surgery on it, but he's fucking like, he's jacked in this movie. He's much, he's much more like chiseled. Than, than he is in the in the original. You know, he had a shirt off and stuff like that. His shirt's all ripped. But this fucking movie goes to some dark places, right? I mean, 
the ripping out of the the hearts, the the the, the going into the the pits of hell and burning, and there's a lot of fucking shit going on in this movie that's dark. It's funny because apparently, like George Lucas had just gone through a divorce with his wife, and then Steven Spielberg had just had like a bad breakup too, and like they put a lot of that. Uh, you know, anger and angst and whatever the fuck into this movie. It's it's a darker movie. You know, I think that George Lucas also said, like, he wanted to try to make it darker, kind of like Empire Strikes Back was darker compared to Star Wars, uh, the original Star Wars. And, uh, you know, some things work, some things don't. I mean, this is probably, and I'm getting into the rankings as I do these. Uh, I said that Raiders of the Lost Ark was probably my second favorite. This, uh, as far as ranking, right, second best in my opinion, uh, this is probably third, um, third best out of the four that have been made, right? And you could probably assume what the others are, but as as we do the movies, we'll get to them. But yeah, this place, this movie goes in some dark places. I mean, it's fun. It just doesn't have the, you know, I think the lighthearted fun that the original had. Um, but as I said, I guess the, the divorce and their, what they were going through in life played a, a role in that. You know, there's, there's some good action stuff. I mean, the fucking minecart scene, which, you know, rewatching it nowadays, the minecart scene is like, obviously was the inspiration for that fucking Donkey Kong country level. If you're a big fan of Donkey Kong country, uh, for Super Nintendo and that whole series, you know, the minecart level in that game it's like taken right out of this fucking movie, and it's fun. All the like, it's, you know, there's a lot of danger, and the, the it's cool to watch it nowadays too because you see it's all practical. Even when the the people chasing them have fallen to their deaths and stuff like that, and those are the things, like I said, with the first uh, Indiana Jones film, Raiders, you you don't get nowadays uh, the practical effects and and just the way it's shot and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, there's also the fucking classic bridge scene. At the end, I mean, it's pure, like, lunatic Indiana Jones. Like, <laughs> and the whole, what does he, what does short round say? He's like, he's not nuts, he crazy. I right, did the voice. <laughs> That's me doing the short round voice. I couldn't, it's just that you can't even, you can't not do it. You can't fucking not do it. Uh, but such a fun character. Uh, in this one too, like especially because Indiana Jones is like a psychopath in this movie. When you really, you know, he's crazy. Obviously, you know, he's fucking swinging around, going for search of artifacts and tools. But in this one, he's like fucking extra crazy. Uh, just the shit he does. He kills a lot of people. That bridge scene, as I said, like him hitting the fucking bridge. Uh, you know, whatever the hell he says, time to meet your maker, time to meet whatever the fuck the God's name is. And the, the terror in everybody's eyes when they, the bad guy's eyes, when they realize what he's doing, it, it, it's great. These fucking people are feeding, you know, people are getting fed to fucking crocodiles and shit like that. This fucking movie gets dark, uh, so dark that Temple of Doom was one of the pushing factors the invention of PG thirteen and I and later G rating uh, w- when that came into play, but specifically PG thirteen, like it was this movie, and it was Gremlins, the original Gremlins. They were a big, uh, you know, contributing factor to another rating. I know Steven Spielberg. I think he reached out to the Motion Picture Association of America, whatever the fuck it is. That's that's a shady thing, uh, as it is just in general. But he reached out to them because. Uh, you know, there was kind of like a little bit of a backlash after this movie because it was rated PG. And, you know, they basically trusted uh, Steven Spielberg with this material and all that. And then you watch the fucking movie and it is it is dark. So this is one of those films that later on, uh, you know, I think Temple of the uh, Last Crusade, rather, was PG-13 after this. And then... Just to have that. I mean, it's smart. I mean, because really before then, it was just either PG or R. As I said, they introduced PG-13. That helps with a lot of movies later on. And then I think somewhere between two, they start doing G-rated movies, which, you know, Disney movies would get. I mean, it's it's an interesting time when you go back and you watch movies from the past. I mean, 
I talk about Beetlejuice in this movie uh, on this podcast all the time, but like Beetlejuice is rated PG. Now that's fine. Um, you know, there's a lot of death and stuff like that. It's about fucking ghosts, but like he drops the F bomb in that movie. You know, Michael Keaton says nice fucking model and the movie's rated PG. I don't know how that didn't get PG 13. Um, but, but it got PG, whatever. It was a weird, it was a weird time for rating movies, but yeah, this, this is one of those movies that, that sets the tone along with gremlins. As I said, that changes things and they had to do what they had to do, which uh, for good reason. But yeah, this is, yeah, third favorite Indiana Jones. It's not, listen, it's got a lot of stuff that's, you know, eh, but it's also got a lot of good stuff in it. It's got fucking Harrison Ford and it's prime. Fucking Dan Aykroyd is in a quick cameo. There's a lot of good humor in it. It's just like, you know, there's a lot of fun adventure. It doesn't have the, uh, you know, the same amount, I think, as Raiders of the Lost Ark or... It doesn't have it pound for pound uh, every second. You feel like you're getting something new, but it does a good job. There's enough action. It, there's ridiculous stuff. And that's the thing about Indiana Jones movies, which I'll get into when I get to like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and stuff like that, because there's a lot of hate with that movie. And as much as I don't love it, I do like it for the most part. But like everybody talks about the ridiculousness and some of the things in that movie. This, these movies have always been ridiculous. I mean, especially, you know, if you even if you're going to start with Temple of Doom, I mean, they go out of a fucking airplane into like a, what is it, a raft, and they survive, they live to tell about it. So there's, a, there's a lot of bizarre stuff. Not, not everything is so grounded in reality. And even the, uh, you know, the, the magic and the mystical shit that has happened in all four of these movies... They're all on the same level. I mean, we start with Raiders. They're getting their faces melted. We go in this one. There's fucking people getting their hearts ripped out and bursting into flames and this and that. Last Crusade, we'll get to. But there's a knight. There's a fucking, essentially a fountain of youth we're drinking from, right? And Kingdom of the Crystal Skull has fucking aliens. Is it, are they all, you know, that different from each other? I'm curious. As I said, I've been careful and haven't read anything about Dial of Destiny, but like I'm curious where they take it with the magic and the mystical in that one. Uh, but is anything really out of line in an Indiana Jones movie? I mean, you could do you could do anything. It, I, it doesn't bother me seeing all this shit. But yeah, this is, all, uh, as I said, this is a more like pessimistic, kind of negative Indiana Jones. I guess they didn't want to have him uh, you know, believe in magic and stuff like that because it's set before Raiders, so, you know, he he hasn't seen all the crazy shit that uh, happens in that. But, yeah, good movie. Temple of Doom, it's, 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 it's a classic. Listen, I mean, it goes... The original trilogy of Indiana Jones are classics. You can't, you can't knock them. Listen, some of them are better than others and stuff like that, but they're all fun. I enjoy them all. And, uh... They they all have the classic label to me. When it gets into Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, pro- probably not a classic, but a fun Indiana Jones movie we will get to. But yeah, Temple of Doom. Um, second movie, uh, builds on the universe. It's still weird, as I said earlier. It's still weird that it's a prequel. I, I don't know. It's not really necessary. It's one of those things. I, I think half people, half the people, don't even fucking realize it's pretty cool when you're watching it, because there's no, there's no indication. It's not like they stop and they're like, "This one is set before Raiders," and it wasn't until like years later that that they really started acknowledging it anyway. Like I remember the videotapes of Indiana Jones, um, and then they had the videotapes of the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. And they were all like labeled um, in in a certain order, like numbered. And I believe they put Temple of Doom before Raiders, like in in that collection or those videotapes. They do shit like that. Is like it's one of those things. It's kind of pointless. I, I'll always watch Raiders first and follow it up with Temple of Doom and close it out with the other two. So it is what it is. But yeah, Indiana Jones. I'm fucking excited. Uh, as I said, as you can tell, um, but next, I don't know if it's going to be the, I'm going to try to do last crusading kingdom of the crystal skull. I'm going to get into this week, 
going to get into them and lead right into Dial of Destiny. As I said, because this is the final Indiana Jones. We got we to gotta celebrate it. I was going to do it all as one episode and just talk uh, as I've done in the past with other things. But I'm like, you know what? Let me split it. Let me savor it. Figure I'll do these little shorter kind of 20-minute episodes on it, just giving my feelings. And, you know, talking about it. I don't know. I, as, as I said last time, maybe I'll get into, not probably not now, but maybe a bonus Indiana Jones episode. I'll talk about some of the young Indiana Jones shit down the road. Or uh, particularly that episode that Harrison Ford's in. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. Is, is anybody else as excited for Indiana Jones to close it out? 80-year-old Harrison Ford. I'm really curious to see the de-aging and how that works and how it holds up. Because sometimes de-aging is, is kind of here and there. You know, it takes you out of it a little bit. But we'll see. We'll see. I think it's only the first half of the movie from what I hear. So I'm sure it'll be fine. But... If this is the first time you listen to the podcast, thank you for listening. Check out the other episodes. As I said, uh, I did the Raiders episode a couple episodes ago. I did the new Jennifer Lawrence movie, No Hard Feelings. I did The Flash. We're keeping it going, right? We're podcasting. I also do another podcast with my friend Ryan, a Rambo podcast called It's a Long Road, where we're talking about Rambo 4. We're going to work our way to Rambo 5 and finish it up. And you could go listen to us talk about Rambo 3 and stuff like that in previous episodes. And this is a lot of fun. If you like action movies and all that fun stuff. We we overanalyze the the Rambo series. So <laughs> a series that probably doesn't need overanalyzing. But that's that's what we do. But yeah, thanks for listening. Check out the other episodes. Check me out on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Dom Solo Reels, where I put some funny movie content and funny videos up from time to time. And thanks for listening. Have a good night. Hello and welcome to the Movie Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Dominic Tartamella, and yes, it's fucking almost time. We're doing it. We're doing it like this. We're playing the fucking Indiana Jones theme song. We're going nuts, okay? Because Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is hitting theaters this week. Counting. I'm going to wear my fedora cap. I'm going to wear my fucking Indiana Jones hat, uh, shirt. Rather, I'm going to wear my Indiana Jones hat, and uh, yeah, I'm going to go nuts, because it's coming, and as I've been doing the last couple episodes, a few episodes ago, I did uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, then I did Temple of Doom, and now we're closing out the original trilogy today uh, with this episode. This is episode 65 of the Movie Thoughts podcast, as I said 65, boom, probably hit 100 uh, soon, because I'm, I'm going, I'm climbing the ladder, if I keep fucking doing Indiana Jones episodes, I'll hit 100, but yeah, we're getting there, and uh, as I said, so I'm going to do Kingdom of the Crystal Skull next, but this is it, this is the, uh, the, the end of the originals, right, from the 80s, the last one in the 80s after this, we didn't get uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull till 2008, uh, how, however people feel about that, you know, some people feel that there's only three of them. I, I acknowledge the fourth one, though. I don't make a big deal. It is what it is. We'll 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 talk about that when we get to it. But Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade 1989 is the year it was made. Steven Spielberg returns to direct. George Lucas, uh, executive producer. And yeah, this is, I'm going to say it. Right from the get-go, because I've been teasing it a little bit with the other ones. This is my favorite Indiana Jones movie. Uh, it's If I'm going to go ranking, I'm going to go uh, Last Crusade, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull coming in at last. But I love this fucking movie. And a lot of the reason I love this movie is because of the relationship that... Harrison Ford 
and Sean Connery, the father and son relationship. I think it's great. Um, but yeah, let's start with some of the stuff I like about this movie. I mean, this could, this movie could have been called Indiana Jones and and the Quest for the Holy Grail or something like that because that is what they're going for in this movie. You know, uh, he's approached Indiana Jones. It ends up that his father has gone missing in search of the Holy Grail, and now he's got to go find his father. He's got to go find the ho- a Holy Grail. He gets into some shit, right? And the cool thing about this movie now is... And this is the cool thing about all the Indiana Jones movies, because you get a little bit more of the mythology as the movies go on. You get to know the character a little bit more. Uh, we open with a flashback. We open with a flashback. Uh, so this this one's set in 1938, I believe. And we open with a flashback in um, 1912, when Indiana Jones uh, is is basically a Boy Scout. And he gets into a little adventure. And it's listen. It's a little goofy at times. It's a little cliche. You kind of see the the origin of Indiana Jones uh, just in in one day. Essentially, you know, he takes his image, uh, his, his his wardrobe look from somebody else. He gets whipped in the face, uh, in in the chin, uh, and the, which leaves the scar that Harrison Ford actually has. He has a moment with the snakes and why I hate snakes. Why you get see that origin. And the best part about this little prequel that you get in this moment is that fucking Indiana Jones, young Indiana Jones, is played by the late fucking great River Phoenix. Obviously, uh, you know, most well known for Stand By Me. Nowadays, everybody knows his brother, Joaquin Phoenix. But River was uh, very big at this time, and he was kind of climbing the ladder, and tragically, uh, you know, he OD'd with drugs later on. I don't want to get into the, that fucking horror story, but it was outside Johnny Depp's nightclub. Maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll do some dark, darker, like Hollywood tales uh, on this podcast one day when I get bored, but we're not going to get into the full details of that. I don't know why I'm laughing because it's not funny, but he was a great actor and unfortunately like passed away too early. You know, if you look into his his just career he was he probably would have been like a DiCaprio nowadays because a lot of those roles that went to people like DiCaprio and stuff they were looking at River Phoenix from what I hear I think James Cameron was you know eyeing River Phoenix for Titanic and stuff like that and because he was writing that for a hundred years before the fucking movie actually came out but let's not get lost in the River Phoenix vortex uh River Phoenix does a great job though playing a young Harrison Ford he had worked on him uh in a movie called Mosquito Coast I believe where he played his son and I think Harrison Ford recommended him and he's just great I mean he just he he does it it's not really an impression and he just plays it subdued but he has those like Harrison Ford mannerisms and and reactions and stuff like that and it's great I think it works awesome as I said it kind of shows Indiana Jones essentially forming his identity in one day and it's it's done in a goofy way but it works I think because it's done in a goofy way and because you have somebody who's playing him uh so well um uh, and you know you see all that stuff as I said with the snake with the whip and and getting the hat and stuff like that and then we cut to Indiana Jones in modern times, uh, going after the same artifact that he was going after in the beginning of that movie. And it's, I mean, it's funny because this is the first film that opens up with a flashback. I don't, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull does not open up with a flashback, but now with Dial of Destiny, uh, as everybody knows, not really a spoiler, the movie's going to open with a flashback. We're going to see a younger Indiana Jones played by a de-aged Harrison Ford. So it's kind of like, it's kind of cool. It's, it's, it's very similar to, to the last crusade thing. So we'll see, we'll see how that works. But yeah, as I said, to me, this is my favorite Indiana Jones. I think this honestly is the best Indiana Jones because it, it's just got such a good blend of the action. And it is one of the, like, it's the funniest movie in the series. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, you know, obviously has some humor here and there sprinkled throughout, uh, as well as Temple of Doom. But like this, this movie's really funny. Like you laugh a lot. Uh, I, I, a lot of it is because of the relationship between 
Sean Connery and Harrison Ford, who aren't even in real life that far apart. They were, I think they were like 10 years or 12 years or something, maybe 15. It, it wasn't much. It wasn't like a father-son uh, age difference, but it, they make it work. Fucking Sean Connery, obviously James Bond himself, uh, cool. Uh, you know, he plays a little bit of a, of a different role because he's kind of like, you know, he's not as skilled in in the, you know, action and fucking running around as as his son right so like he kind of looks at his son a lot and he's judging him and it's kind of like a little a little uh easter egg too because as i think i said in the raiders episode uh george lucas may you know came up with indiana jones kind of as his own version of bond and steven spielberg wanted to do a bond movie and they ended up doing this so it's kind of like they got fucking bond to play their Bond's father, which is a little cute, uh, cute little connection. Now, as far as returning characters uh, from the series, you do get Marcus Brody, played by Denholm Elliott, who, uh, you know, he popped up in Raiders of the Lost Ark. He was a little bit, you know, he's just kind of side character, but he gets to shine a little bit more. They give him a little bit more humor. Uh, Sala also returns, which Sala is going to be in D- uh, Dial Destiny. So Sala... I believe next to Indiana Jones has been in the most or I mean he's probably tied with Marion because she I believe is in this newest one even though they're trying to kind of hide it spoiler alert but yeah you got a good villain uh in, in this movie too you got a couple of good villains uh sprinkled out actually Julian Glover plays Donovan, and he's the one who, uh, you know, gets in the involved. You know him from, like, Empire Strikes Back. He was also in Game of Thrones. And um, you also get Dr. Snyder, who is a good, you know, it, listen, it's another Allison Duty. I believe that I believe that's how her name is pronounced. But, um, but, yeah, it's another, you know, female role, and they put a little spin on it because, listen, she fucking turns on... Harrison Ford at some point and then it's funny because she kind of had uh, a thing with Sean Connery as well so they go back uh, and forth with that with that joke and the father and son shit there's a lot of good sequences in here you know going underground there's a scene where all the fucking rats there's a, a good boat chase in here uh, <laughs> there's a ridiculous thing where Indy like pretends to be a Scottish guy and that doesn't do it good, but like he's pretending to be a Scottish guy and he's wearing the the girl's hat and stuff like that. It's silly, but you don't really get to see Indiana Jones like do stuff like that. So this is the first time you really see it. The guy obviously knows he's not Scottish and he tells him something like, "If you're a Scottish, I'm Mickey Mouse," and then he just punches him in the face. You get the return of the Nazis. I had said with Temple of Doom, they were trying to avoid the Nazis again, so they you know set it as a prequel. But the Nazis are in here, and they, they work. They, they Listen, Indiana Jones, Nazis, they're fucking good villains. Uh, and the newest one, right, there's going to be a former Nazi, so we'll see how that works with Mads Mikkelsen. And I just like when, um, the, as I said, the relationship with Indy and his father, because Indy is, you know, the first half of the movie, in the beginning, before Sean Connery comes in, he's Indy, and he's doing his thing, and he's confident. And then, like... The second his father comes into the picture, he kind of like regresses back to a child and he's saying, yes, sir. And he's like, it's just, he's very proper. And obviously you get Sean Connery, junior, junior. And it's it's the funny dynamic. He refuses to call him Indiana. Uh, I also like the whole like confusion between the two when people are calling them Dr. Jones. At one point, Indy's wearing a fucking tie in this movie with like the leather jacket and I don't know if that was part of that kind of regression too like he's dressed a little bit more proper for his father I don't know if that was on purpose uh I, I there, but there's a lot of funny jokes you know one, one that comes to mind is when um Indiana Jones is kind of building up uh Marcus Brody because he's got the he, he's got whatever he's got and he's trying to say oh you know he could blend in and, and then they cut to <laughs> Marcus Brody lost and like in the middle of a crowd of people and him and Sala have funny a funny scene together uh, when they basically have to get away from the bad guys a lot of good stuff in here uh, the fucking sliding the, the, the little secret door with the Nazis 
Uh, weird scene with Hitler, Hitler cameo in this movie. There is definitely a Hitler cameo in this film, and he comes and he signs uh, Indiana Jones's book. There's, of course, the fucking classic blimp scene where Indy throws the Nazi out the window and then the whole no ticket joke and everybody starts going through their fucking bags. It's a great movie. It's a great Indiana Jones movie. I think even like, I feel like even more so if it makes any sense more like some people will probably think it's blasphemous. I mean, Raiders of the Lost Ark is the original, but like, I think even more so than the original people could enjoy this movie as like a standalone thing. You know, if if somebody's never seen Indiana Jones and you pop this bad boy on, like you're not missing a beat. Especially that you got that little origin in the beginning. It kind of it kind of fills in the gaps if you don't know who Indiana Jones is. And a lot of ways it's like the perfect fucking Father's Day gift. Next fucking uh Father's Day movie rather. I mean, you get the gift and get the Blu-ray, but um it is like the perfect Father's Day movie. This is a movie that you sit down with your dad, you have a few laughs, you bond a little bit. It's, it's just enjoyable. It's enjoyable because that relationship feels very real, and there's a lot of heart in the movie. Um, I didn't mention it in the other two episodes, but cannot be understated. John Williams' score in all of these films, as well as this one, I'm excited to hear his new score in Dial of Destiny. Uh, you know, the only thing missing uh, with the you know return of Indiana Jones now is like the original artwork for the posters was done by Drew Struzan who has since retired and that's the only thing we're missing I mean some of the posters I do like them for the new movie but they just don't hit like those classic Indiana Jones posters even Kingdom of the Crystal Skull had like great Drew Struzan artwork so it's unfortunate he's retired I wish he would have came out one more time and maybe did this for the final uh, bow but whatever he's doing his thing uh, I all, but as I said I like all the emotional stuff. And I, this is what I think elevates this movie uh, more so than like Raiders for me. Because the father-son relationship, you know, there's the moment when Sean Connery thinks that Indy like falls off a cliff. And you see a lot of emotion in that scene. And he's like, oh God, I lost him. I never told him. And then, like, when he realized, I'm, fuck it, I'm going to get choked up and start crying on this podcast right now. Maybe i got some other shit going on in my life. But um, when uh, he realizes Indy's not dead, he's like, I thought I lost you, boy. I'm not, I'm not crying. I'm not crying while I'm recording this podcast. Uh, but And then they have the scene later when they kind of switch roles and uh, Sean Connery's shot and, you know, Harrison Ford's running to get the Holy Grail and all that stuff. And there's a lot of emotion there. And I think that's really the thing that brings this movie up in my book. Uh, obviously, cool ending, comparable to the previous movies, right? The whole, the old night, the you chose pull, the great practical effects, fucking Donovan getting his shit, getting his just desserts, aging, um... That, you know, this is the thing I, I talk about all the time, about the CGI and practical effects. Like, I just love that when he gets old and he turns into the fucking uh, bones, essentially. It's just, it's so creepy. And whatever they did, claymation, stop motion, whatever the fuck it is. It's, there's nothing creepier than that. If you did that CGI, it just wouldn't have the same creep factor. You know, still to this day, that scene, like, creeps me out. Just his long hair and shit like that, and him grabbing the girl and holding her, and Indiana running over and pulling him away. And even, like, simple things, like when uh, Indiana pours the, the grail water on Sean Connery's wound, and it kind of, like, fizzles out. It's all done. You could tell they did it. What Whatever the fuck. They put something that fizzed, and then they just washed the, the fake blood away, but it works. Whereas, like, if you were doing it with CGI or something like that, it would just look... It would look like a little too much. It would, it would They would overdo it, right? But yeah, the emotional kicks um, keep coming in this movie, especially towards the end. And you, you see that relationship. Like, they really uh, fleshed it out in a way where, like, you know, Indy's trying to, like, live up to his father and his father. Even all the crazy shit Indiana Jones is doing in this movie, his father kind of looks at him with, like, a disapproving eye. And then, like, as the movie goes on, he kind of starts being a little bit more like, oh, you know, like, like 
you know, giving him credit where credit's due. And the emotional kick at the end when um, Dr. Schneider is reaching for the, the grail, she falls to her death. And then Indiana Jones is right in that place. And now Sean Connery is holding him and Indiana's reaching for the grail. And I love all that stuff. I love it. I, I think it's just great. He's like, what does he say? He's, he finally calls him Indiana. And he's like, let it go. And then they have that moment. He pulls him up and it's just, it's great. It's great. It's a great little gut punch and well-written and well-acted and well-directed and just a fucking fun movie. If you see one Indiana Jones movie, I highly, I like, I highly recommend Last Crusade. If you're listening to this podcast and you're like, this guy's been talking about Indiana Jones fucking movies for the last three episodes. What the fuck? Like, if you've never seen him, I'm sorry, but <laughs> if you're going to watch one Last Crusade is is the one to watch. It just works so well uh, on so many different levels, and yeah, I, I love it. I love all that stuff. I love the even just the the adventure part of it, right? The the leap of faith part, all that magical, mystical stuff. I also love the joke about the dog at the end, uh, where like the dog's name was Indiana. That was a nice little nugget too, because. Apparently, George Lucas's dog was named Indiana, so that's where he got the name. But yeah, this movie just pulls off the dynamic. I mean, Sean Connery, out of all the Indiana Jones sidekicks uh, that are in these movies, right? Whether it be Marion's great, you know, Short Round, uh, and the girl from Temple of Doom, they're fun. Uh, Shia LaBeouf, we'll get into when we get into, but like Sean Connery. Is, is probably the best. He he works the best. Their dynamic works so well. And they try to... That's the thing about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I'm going to rewatch it soon and then do the episode. But they do try to replicate that a little bit in a different way. And I did appreciate that because you don't find out till later. But it is Indiana Jones's son. And they kind of try to replicate that and have them have that dynamic. It doesn't quite land the way it does in Last Crusade, but I appreciated that they that they went for that. But yeah, Last Fucking Crusade. Love it. It's a classic, and it still holds up, and the effects still hold up. It's just a great movie. Uh, practical effects, stunt work, everything. Beautiful. Love it. And this could have been the end of the Indiana Jones franchise, and for some people it is the end of the Indiana Jones franchise. They just pretend that the fourth one doesn't exist. But as I said, we're not going to pretend the fourth one doesn't exist. We're going to watch the fourth one again for the, I don't know how many times I've seen it. And then I'm going to give you my thoughts on that one in the next episode. And it's leading up to dial of destiny, which I'm probably going to see Thursday. So I'll probably put the kingdom of the crystal skull episode out tomorrow. And then Thursday I'll see dial of destiny. I'll give my thoughts on that. But yeah, the, 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 you can't, top the classic three, right? I mean, especially, as I said, Raiders and um, The Last Crusade, you really can't top those. Temple of Doom even comes close, but fall short. You know, it still is, and I still love elements of Temple of Doom, but I just think Raiders and Last Crusade are on another level. But that's all the Indiana Jones talk I'm doing for today. If this is the first time you're listening to the podcast, welcome. This is what I do. Uh, it's not always about Indiana Jones. This week it is, but I do other movies, right? I did No Hard Feelings, the new Jennifer Lawrence comedy, uh, The Flash recently. I do some older movies. Get into it on this podcast, right? We talk, give my thoughts, and all that shit. I uh, get a little goofy sometimes. I do impressions. You know, you hear it. It's funny. It's not. Whatever. Uh, if you like what you hear, subscribe. Uh, check out the other podcast. Rate, review, all that shit. iTunes, Spotify. I don't know how it works. Check me out on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Dom Solo Reels, where sometimes I post funny videos. Also, me and my friend Ryan do a Rambo podcast called It's a Long Road, where we talk about Rambo, the Sylvester Stallone franchise consisting of five movies. So check that out if you want some laughs on that. And thanks for listening. Have a good one. Thank you.
Hello and welcome to Movie Thoughts. I'm your host, Dominic Tartamella, and here we go again. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny hits theaters this week. I'm very excited. As you can tell, uh, I've been recording uh, these episodes of the past entries in the series, right? I started with Raiders. I did Temple of Doom. Uh... Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the third, my favorite in the franchise, might I add. If you haven't listened to those episodes, go back and listen to them, because right now we're going to get uh, to the most divisive entry in this series, and that is the fourth installment, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now, Indiana Jones, uh, the last movie before this was Last Crusade, as I said. That was 1989, and then this film didn't come out to 2008. Um, I don't know, you know, what what the mindset was at this point um, with Indiana Jones. They did the Young Indiana Jones series not too long after the Last Crusade, but I don't know if they had plans to do any more movies. I'm sure they dabbled in it, uh, you know, over the years. George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, but it. It took a while. Maybe at one point they weren't going to do it. Uh, they were going to just leave it at three. But they did it. Uh, and <laughs> as I said, it is a movie that everybody feels differently about. I personally don't hate this movie. And I never really hated it. Um, now, re-watching it, I have to say, uh, I I think I used to like it a little bit more. I think I was nicer to it. I don't, as I said, like, I don't sit there and go, oh, there is no fourth Indiana Jones. I'm not going to fucking pretend there's no fourth Indiana Jones. There is a fourth Indiana Jones. But I see, I see a lot of the problems nowadays with it, rewatching it. I wonder after seeing Dial of Destiny, whether that's better than this, in my opinion, or worse than this, how I'm going to feel about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's I, I find myself like, you know, I did this for the podcast. I watched all four. I made sure I watched all four. But I know in the past I've watched them. And then when I got up to the fourth one, I kind of just like tune out. And, and it kind of happened again, to be honest. I mean, there's there's something about it. You know, some people have said that Harrison Ford's kind of not like bringing it. He's kind of, and I don't see a problem with Harrison Ford's performance. He feels like Indiana Jones to me. But at times, the movie itself doesn't really feel like the Indiana Jones movie we all know and love. It, it feels uh, very modern. And that, that, I think, is maybe something to do with the setting as well, right? The movie opens up with the classic Paramount logo. And it morphs into, uh, um, I guess it's a gopher's like dirt hill. And you see a CGI gopher. Now, right from the beginning of the movie, the CGI gopher, uh, in hindsight, you know, even seeing it in theaters back in the day, it's kind of like a bad omen. I mean, this isn't fucking Caddyshack or the god-awful Caddyshack 2. Is a, a gopher needed? And, and maybe in that aspect, they should have done a a puppet gopher like they did in those movies because the CGI kind of doesn't feel right from right from the beginning uh you get Elvis is how uh you ain't nothing but a hound dog playing and that sets the tone because now we are in 1957 and this film like ushers uh, you know Indiana Jones closer to our time a bit you know at this time as I said it's 2008 they're still way off but 1957 feels more recent than, let's say, 1938, uh, where, like, the previous film took place. So it starts to feel a little bit more modern, and I'm curious to see, like, with Dial of Destiny, because now that one is set in the 60s, I think 69, so, like, uh, 11 years after this, and I'm curious to see if it has the same effect on that movie, because I think that's part of it, whether it's, listen, it's not... It's out. Of, it's out of the control, right? They're setting the movie uh, uh, accordingly to Harrison Ford's age and what the what the timeline would be. But I think that's part of what gets a little lost when you put Indy in these more modern times. Now, I don't fucking mind. I love Elvis. 
and I, I love the song opening the film up. And there's a lot more modern songs, apparently, in this Dial of Destiny film. I mean, in one of the trailers, there's Sympathy for the Devil by the Rolling Stones, you know, to, you know, present that time, you know, have the music, it puts you back into into the world. But the previous three entries were so long ago, uh, you know, in the 30s, and uh, Indiana Jones feels most at home in that time. And and that's just the way it is. I mean, he's an archaeologist. He goes in there. He doesn't have. There's not really a lot of technology. There's old cars. There's this. When there's something about it that I think makes it feel uh, a little bit less than an Indiana Jones film, whether it's you know Mutt Williams, which we'll get to him in a minute, but the whole greaser thing. It's it's odd seeing that stuff because you're not used to seeing that stuff. And even after all these years of you know, watching this movie, I could notice that that may be one of the factors that makes it feel different from the other ones. Um, you know, one of the other things they do in the beginning of this movie, which some people hate, some people don't mind, I'm kind of indifferent about it, but they fucking start in the warehouse where uh, the Ark of Covenant was left at the very end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, you know, you start to get hints of it. I remember seeing it and being like, is this the fucking warehouse? You hear, like, the music cues and stuff like this. And it, they're in there. And it's, uh, you know, Indiana Jones is forced to find another artifact for our villains. And you, at one point, see the broken crate with the Ark Covenant. It's a very quick scene, little Easter egg. But it does kind of undermine... Uh, what went on in Raiders of the Lost Ark and that kind of mystery of, of where that was that, you know, I pictured that warehouse being something that was, you know, never going to have human beings just walking in it. You know, they kind of actually show that it's area 51 in this. I don't think they did that in Raiders, but it kind of ruins the mystery a little bit. When you go back and watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, it doesn't have that. Uh, but you know, I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind it so much. I mean, Indy gets a cool intro with, uh, you know, his shadow and they build it up and he picks up his hat. Now you got Ray Winstone. Uh, so I think his name is Rince Winstein or Winstone. And, you know, you know him for like movies like The Departed and he plays, um, Indy's, one of Indy's friends, right? And this an established relationship that they have. He plays George and Mac and, you know, they're kind of building it up as almost like a Sala. And you're kind of sitting there scratching your head going like, all right, well, if they're building it up and Sala, why isn't it fucking Sala? Well, that's because Ray Winston's character double crosses Indy a few dozen times in this film. So I understand why Sala uh, wasn't in this role. I heard that the actor was approached to do a cameo at the end of the wedding, but he felt that it was kind of like pointless or whatever kind of undermine the character or whatever to have him in such a small capacity with no real reason but ray winston ray winston whatever the fuck his name is he's he's fine i like him uh he's doing his thing as i said i i, I like him as an actor in general you know he's double cross he's kind of doing the cliche thing of oh you know i'm i'm a double agent and this and that and it, it works for the most part uh, but it all, it also feels a little forced. Their friendship feels a little forced because he is a new character to this franchise. Now, of course, one of the most notorious things about this movie is the nuking of the fridge, okay? Um, the nuking of the fridge that it's become a term when movies kind of go to the point of no return and they kind of just fucking throw everything away, right? It's back in the TV days, there was the, the, they coined the phrase jumping of the shark because there was an episode of happy days when Fonzie jumped the, a shark in like a, a surfing competition or something. And that was forever known as like when happy days took a downfall. So now after Indiana Jones, there's the whole nuking of the fridge thing. And it's like, all right, you know, he went in the fridge and the fucking atomic. I actually don't mind this sequence. I think it's cool. I think it's a little different. I I dabbled in this in the last couple episodes talking about the other entries in the series. Like it's a fucking Indiana Jones movie. There's magic, there's mystical shit, there's unrealistic shit, 
And the nuking of the fridge never seemed like something to me that was like, all right, it's not that outrageous. I mean, they make it a point that it's an old fashioned fridge and it's lined with lead and stuff like that. They show it on the screen and whatever. It's, is it believable? Would you fucking survive a nuclear attack? I don't know. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. If God forbid something happens, I'll crawl into my fridge. I probably won't be able to get out, but I don't mind it as much as a lot of people do. Uh, but let's skip around a little bit. We'll talk about Mutt Williams. Uh, Shia LaBeouf himself and his introduction. I do, contrary to popular be- belief, I don't hate Shia LaBeouf in this movie. Um, I think, I mean, I don't know the guy personally. Like, just from the way he presents himself and stuff like that, I think I tend to dislike him more uh, as a real person. I, I don't hate his character for the role of what he's doing. He's, you know, listen, he's this teenage fucking jerk, basically. Uh, who later finds out that he's Indiana Jones' son. He's kind of like a punk. He's a greaser, as I said. But I think he does a good job with the role. I think he's doing what he's supposed to be doing in this movie, and I don't mind him. Uh, He went on after this film. I still remember reading the articles on, like, Joe Blow back in the day when the movie was still in fucking theaters. He went, and he bad-mouthed the movie. He was like, oh, because, you know, the movie started getting some critical... Uh, shit, basically, <laughs> to, to call it something else. And it started getting bashed a little bit by fans. And he went and he badmouthed the movie while the movie was still in its theatrical run. Now, I don't know the quotes exactly. I know that Spielberg, this kind, this fucked up their relationship. Because he was in a few movies, like Tran- the first Transformers. I don't know if Spielberg's still involved with Transformers as a producer in any way. But the first Transformers, at least the first couple, I know Spielberg was a producer on. So Shia LaBeouf was in those, obviously. Um, there was, I remember there's a movie like Eagle Eye, I think, that Spielberg produced or something like that. A few movies that Spielberg produced, Shia LaBeouf was in. And this kind of tarnished his, his relationship with Spielberg. And even Harrison Ford went, I remember him saying something. There's some you could look it up. I should have prepared. But Harrison Ford... Uh, went and said, uh, you know, kind of bashed Shia LaBeouf and, and, and basically said, you know, he called him the name or something and said, like, you know, you stand by the picture. And listen, Harrison Ford's an old school fucking guy. He's been doing this for years. And yeah, you should stand by the product, especially when the movie is in its, uh, you know, infancy and it's in the theaters and that's when it's making its money and that's when it's having its initial run. You know, listen, if it's 30 years later... And you're like, you know, I didn't really love that one. Or it's 20 years later, ten, even 10 years later or something like that. And you're saying, ah, I didn't really like the way the movie came out. I didn't agree with everything. That's fine. That's your prerogative as an actor and whatever. Maybe you got a paycheck and you didn't really, it didn't really end up being the movie you want. But like the movie's in fucking theaters. You're bashing it. So then that, that if, you, if the star, and especially Shia LaBeouf at that time, he's a rising star. If you're bashing a movie, it's not going to help it. So I understand the the rift that was caused between Spielberg and and Harrison Ford speaking up as well and I kind of agree with them on that. Um, you know, there's a pretty cool motor, motorcycle scene with them too, and they're jumping, they're going in libraries, they're going out of cars. I like that stuff. Uh, you know, in the, the, there's fun stuff in here. This movie's not all bad for people that do hate it. You know, Indiana Jones uh, telling Mutt to hit somebody and pick a fight, and then the greasers get involved and they take sides. I liked all that stuff. There's there's funny moments in there. As I said in, uh, when I talked about Last Crusade, they're kind of trying to um, do the Sean Connery, uh, Harrison Ford relationship a, a little bit, especially when you find out that Mutt is actually Henry Junior, uh, Henry the the third, and that he is his son. They 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 try to you know recapture that magic a little bit. It doesn't work out as well. I think that that Shia LaBeouf and Harrison Ford have good chemistry, but I just don't think uh, the the script and their relationship uh, works as well. But yeah, there's good stuff. Listen, there's some funny jokes. Uh, There's actually a funny joke that was uh, funny for a couple of reasons. So there's a a point when, after that fight, that uh, Mutt is telling Indy that, oh, you know, you fight pretty good for an old man. And there's a pause, and he's like, oh, thanks, you know? And then he says, what are you, 80? And it's actually, it's a funny moment. Uh, Shia delivers delivers the line good, and you actually giggle. 
But the funnier thing nowadays is this was 2008, right? Now Harrison Ford is actually 80 years old when the when Dial of Destiny is coming out. I think actually like in another week or so, I think it's his birthday. I think he's going to be over 80, which is which is I could be wrong on that, but I thought I heard that somewhere, which is fucking it's just a funny little joke that has more meaning and has more depth now because you're seeing this guy do this at 80 and and he was making a pun on him being 80. They probably all had a good laugh because it's like at this point, you know, Harrison Ford's 20 years younger whatever he is. Saying, all right, I make him say I'm 80, whatever. It's funny. Uh, also, you get Karen Allen returning as Marion. And she's, she's a nice addition. It's nice to have her back. She steps right back into that role. Obviously, she's a little older, just like Harrison Ford. They age. It's, it's, this is what happens. Um, but she fulfills that role. I like the bantering when they first see each other again. And they're, they kind of go to that place where they're fighting. They're... They have a history they talk about again. It didn't work out. And around this time, you find out that um, Mutt is Indy's son. And I like when he finds out that he's Indy's son, he kind of changes his whole like attitude. Because at first, he's like, yeah, do what you want, kid. Don't don't let anybody tell you any different. And then, and then he finds out it's his son. He's like, why'd you make him... Why'd you make him stop going to school? I like all that because it's very true to the character. Uh, Jonathan Hurt is also in this as Ox, and he plays, you know, he's kind of under a fucking spell half the movie. And he, he does a good job. He's a fun little addition. There are, you know, for this movie, uh, as much as people hate it, there's there's memorable moments. There's memorable characters. Um, as I said, returning characters. You miss out on some of those, like Sala. Uh, Kate Blanchett is uh, Arena. She's the villain, and she's pretty good. She's a little, she's a bit too cartoonish at times. That's my only real problem with it. She's a bit too cartoonish. You know, she's kind of got mixed motives, but she works for the most part. But like I said, I think the things that take me out of it the most is like um, the more modern setting. Uh, and yet again, I can't blame it because now the next one's going to be the same thing. It's going to be even more, you know, closer to our time. But the the CGI too. There's a lot of CGI in this movie, and and, and as I said, the gopher in the beginning is kind of like a metaphor for where this film is going to go, and it goes to those places. And and that big CGI kind of takes me out of it, you know. John Williams obviously back again for the fourth time, and and does a great score and all that fun stuff. And then, you know, the, the the artifact itself, the crystal skull, is cool. I like the design. I don't mind the whole alien thing. Uh, that's another thing. Like, a lot of people are kind of like, oh, the fucking aliens. It's kind of like out there for an Indiana Jones movie. First of all, and I'll stress that I've said this probably on the last episodes, but, like, look at all the wild shit that happens in the other three movies. Whether it's the shit the wild dark shit that goes down in temple of doom the the face melting and raiders uh the, the the all the shit with the holy grail and healing and you know indiana jones for five minutes is basically uh, you know in an indestructible you know superhero after drinking that water and you know i don't mind the aliens it's not out of the realm of possibility they kind of call them inter what is it called like uh intergalactic beings or whatever the hell they call them. And, and, you know, they kind of, they look like something out of Spielberg's other movie, Close Encounters. Not so much like E.T. You know, they're more of that gray, kind of generic. But I would have appreciated uh, more of a a practical effect with them, too. If we would have went old school and built it up, I just feel like Indiana Jones, the, the classic Indiana Jones stuff is synonymous with those practical effects. And you kind of miss out there and that's uh, uh, really the the main problem, I think, with this movie. You know, the script, maybe it's not as strong as the others, but I think that's what takes a lot of fans out of this movie. And there's the big fucking one. There's the monkey scene. Okay, the monkey swinging scene with Shia LaBeouf, uh, you know, towards the end of the movie is unforgivable. I mean, I can't in, in any, uh, you know, capacity... In any universe, uh, I can I cannot justify this scene existing. I think it's way too cartoonish. It feels like something out of fucking Jumanji. It's stupid. And there's a scene right before it when he's sword fighting 
on the car uh, with Kate Blanchett. And like just by comparison, the monkey stuff, because I don't really like the sword stuff, but like the monkey stuff by comparison makes that look like gold. That makes that scene like a, a chef's kiss kind of thing. But the fucking monkey, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. And I, I love Spielberg. I love George Lucas. I, I grew up with their films like everybody else. And But I understand now why they kind of took a back seat with this newest one because nobody wants to fucking listen to people complain. I'm complaining about the fucking monkey scene still after all these years. And there's fans that are worse than me that are fucking bitching about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull forever. So I understand why he didn't direct this one. He decided to do other things and they weren't as involved. They passed it on to James Mangold with Dial Destiny. So we'll see how it ends up. But I completely get it because after the criticism they got for this, it's probably like, you know what? Fuck it. We tried. We didn't do it. Maybe we're out of touch. Maybe somebody new has got to come in. At least if it sucks or if somebody else messes it up, it's not our problems. Uh, I did like the whole um, ant scene. Yet again, it's CGI. Could have maybe done some of it practical. Listen, we're living in a modern age. I understand why they do it fucking CGI. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, I want it to be rubber fucking ants. Uh, that that scene's pretty good. It kind of has that creepy horror esque touch that a lot of the Indiana Jones movies do have. Uh, there's the funny scene with the three waterfalls. It works. Yet again, nothing out of the realm of possibility in an Indiana Jones movie. It all works. And then there's of course the ending with the aliens when they're basically giving the information to, to Kate Blanchett. She wants to know everything. She wants to know everything. She wants to know everything. And her fucking head and eyes shoot out light and she fucking brain explodes kind of thing. Uh, similar to the, the brain melting stuff. Uh, I can't say it enough. I'm like a broken record. Would have loved if it was a little bit more prosthetic or, um, uh, you know, the, those older effects. It's not. It's very CGI. That scene, too, a lot of it, when the when the tomb and all that, the ruins are kind of crumbling... It feels very video gamey. It feels very like they're in front of a of green screen because that's what it basically is. And, and that kind of takes me out of it, too. You, you know, with an Indiana Jones movie, you want to feel like you're in the fucking tombs with him. You want to feel like you're in the ruins with him. And when that stuff really isn't there, it gets harder to believe that. Your eye recognizes that. And, and those are the faults that this movie really has. But there's good stuff. I, I listen, even when the fucking flying saucer comes at the end and it's spinning and it goes into another dimension, I don't even mind it. It is what it is. I don't hate, I like alien stuff. I, I never thought I'd see, you know, at a certain point in my life, I never thought I'd see aliens in an Indiana Jones movie. But yet again, Spiel, this is Spielberg we're talking about. He's fucking done E.T. He's done Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, uh, is, is it out of the realm of possibility? No. Uh, so I, I don't hate all that stuff. And I like the ending. I like the ending with the wedding. Um, you get that. That's where Sala would have popped up. And you get the little nice moment when Indiana Jones' hat blows away. Shia LaBeouf goes for it. And then fucking Indiana Jones yanks it from him as he's about to put it on and puts it on and smiles at him. And it's like, you know, you kind of had that moment in the theater. I remember like, oh, they're setting it up. He was reaching for the hat, Shia LaBeouf. And it was like... Ah, uh, they're setting it up for a reboot. They're setting it up for a remake with you know him continuing it and stuff like that. And then they 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 that's the little wink at the audience. Like we know what you're thinking. You're thinking we're going to replace Indiana Jones, and guess what? We're not. So thank God Spielberg, Lucas, they had the hindsight to know at least not to do that, because God knows where we would have been with a fifth installment or future installments if they would have let Mutt Williams put on that hat. But yeah, there's a lot of, there's good moments in here. There's bad moments in here. As I said, when it comes down to rankings for me, it's last crusade Raiders temple of doom. And then this coming in at fourth, uh, I'm curious to see where dial of destiny hits me and where it sits on that list to be continued on that aspect. Also. So Ma the actor that played Marcus Brody, and Last Crusade and Raiders, he had passed away at this point. And there's a moment in the beginning of the movie where he's like, oh, we lost Mark, we lost Brody, we lost Marcus, whatever the hell he calls him, and we lost Dad. And there's a picture of Sean Connery uh, on the table as well. Sean Connery at this point, who, you know, has now passed away, was not dead at this point. And there was talk 
that he was maybe going to do it. He decided not to. He was, I think he was retired. I think at one point he was going to come out of retirement. It would have been cool to see him uh, to some capacity, but he decided not to do it. I don't know where he would have fit overall in the story. If maybe he would have came back, uh, maybe they would have gave him a bigger role. There might have been an interesting dynamic with him uh, being the grandfather then uh, of Mutt, you know, and that, that three generations of Henry Jones could have been cool, right? But we'll probably never see that uh, in any capacity. Well, because one, Sean Connery's passed away, as I said, ripped to the legend, and Shia LaBeouf is not in Dial of Destiny from what I've heard. Uh, I've heard some things. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. I, I, I heard a rumor that's probably true, uh, and we'll, we'll see when we see the movie. But yeah, that's it. Uh, that was my rundown with the, these, these four episodes of the Indiana Jones franchise. As I said, if you didn't listen to the other ones, go check out the other ones. Raiders, Temple, uh, Last Crusade, and now this. So I'm excited. Dial of Destiny, I'm going to see it Thursday probably. I'm aiming to see it. So I'll do my little podcast on that. Uh, probably started off non-spoilers or spoiler-free, and then I'll announce if I'm going to get the spoilers, so you're safe to listen to it if you're just going to check it out before seeing the movie. Uh, and that's the podcast. If this is the first time you listen to the podcast, thank you for listening. Check out the other episodes. As I said, check me out on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Dom Solo Reels, where I post funny videos. And rate, like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Thanks for listening. Have a good night. Hello and welcome to another episode of Movie Thoughts. I'm your host, Dominic Tartamella, and how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, tonight's the night. You know what it is, uh, because the last four episodes, we talked about them. We talked about the man, the myth, the legend, Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford's iconic character. Uh, as I said in four of the previous episodes, I went through all the movies, Raiders, Temple, Last Crusade, and of course, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, because we're celebrating. We're celebrating the final Indiana Jones film. That's right, the final one. Um, I'm sitting here. I just got out of the theater. I'm wearing my Indiana Jones fedora hat, my officially licensed Indiana Jones fedora hat. It's got the logo inside. It's got his name. It's got a little metal thing on the outside says Indiana Jones. It's official. Uh, and I just saw the fifth installment, the fifth and final installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. As I said, um, if you'd like to go and listen to my other thoughts and, and build yourself up to this episode, then go listen to the other episodes that I just did. Uh, but yeah, this is episode 67 of the Movie Thoughts podcast, and we're doing it. We... I just got out of the theater, as I said. Uh, the film is directed by James Mangold and is, of course, starring Harrison Ford. This is the first in the franchise that is not directed by Steven Spielberg. Not directed by Steven Spielberg. This is the first one also uh, where we, uh, Disney is distri uh, distributing the movie. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the movie, but uh, right away, I'll say, if this is the first time you listen to the podcast and you don't know how this is going to go, I'm going to be spoiler-free for a bit. I'm not going to spoil this movie. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I don't like to spoil movies. I, I didn't have this movie spoiled for me. I heard a couple of rumors. I avoided spoilers pretty good, but I heard a couple little things, uh, which I'll talk to when I get to spoilers. But yeah, we're going to jump into it. So as I said, this is the fifth and final installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. This franchise has been around uh, since 1981 with Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, you know, I recently rated those and how I felt about them. And I'll get to the rating overall of this franchise uh, when I finish talking about this one. But this was a movie that... Like a lot of Indiana Jones fans, I was anticipating. 
Um, there was a lot of word of mouth with the whole, uh, what was it, Cannes Film Festival. They, it played and it got, you know, it got, it started getting mixed reviews, to say the least, right? And as I always say on this podcast, don't fucking live and die by reviews. Uh, this podcast, why I call it Movie Thoughts, one of the reasons is because it's it's just my thoughts. And I do you know, I do kind of give reviews, but I try not to be so uh, swaying in either direction. If I really, listen, if you really hate a movie, I'll fucking give my opinion. I'll tell you I don't like it. But I'm always going to try to say, go see it, get your own opinion. Um, but this movie, for me, was really hyped for it, right? Like a lot of people. Uh, but when I started seeing those kind of reviews, you can't help but listen. You, 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 they they affect you, right? I mean, so I lowered my expectations a little bit. I try to set the bar. All right, let me just, uh, you know, level out a little bit because you don't want to go into a movie with this kind of like unreachable expectation. We've all done it, right? I mean, I think that was part of the problem with the Star Wars sequels. I think a lot of people, including myself, which for the most part I like those movies, as I've said, but like you get to that point when your expectations are just fucking bananas, right? They're unreachable, essentially. And you're making up the movie in your head before you go in, so then you want, you kind of want that movie. So then when you actually watch the movie and it's not the movie you envisioned, you kind of get, I'm not saying you get mad, but you're kind of disappointed from that. And uh, you got to look at it with different eyes. That's always why I believe in seeing movies more than once too, especially movies that you're really, really anticipating. That's what I do. Uh, I try to see it more than once, so I get that that initial viewing out of my system, and I see it with with di- through a different lens, if you will. But as I said, this is the first one not directed by Spielberg, first one done by Disney. Uh, I, I didn't get caught up in a lot of the bullshit, as I said, with spoilers and possible script leaks that I don't even know if they ended up being true or what. I heard, you know, rumblings, whispers about that stuff. Um, I didn't delve into it because I, I didn't want to rob my theater experience. Now, um, let's I'll get it right out of the way right now. I like this movie. Um, I, I don't, I didn't, it wasn't an instant love affair. Uh, I will definitely be seeing it again soon, maybe even this weekend. Who knows? When, when I get a chance, I will try to see it again, as I did recently with The Flash. But I do like this movie. I think it is... Better than Crystal Skull. Um, now, I also wasn't somebody who hated Crystal Skull, so I'm not saying, like, oh, it's mild, but I think it's a better Indiana Jones movie than Crystal Skull. It's a little different. It's It, it, it kind of goes back to the basics. Um, you know, Raiders, and it is a simple story, and it kind of goes there. It goes to some weird places a little bit. Uh, I'll talk about those when I get into spoilers, but give you a rundown you know basically this yet again indiana jones um he's in search of another artifact now the movie opens up with a flashback this has been talked about i'm not going to spoil anything from that flashback uh and the flashback has the aging of harrison ford i think it's set in like the 40s the flashback uh and there's nazis and stuff like that and it gives you backstory of what the plot of the film is going to be and the characters in it right so um it opens up. I think the the opening is great. It's and it, it lasts pretty long. It's it's kind of like a prologue, if you will, and it's about I want to say twenty five minutes to a half hour, and it feels like like a lost Indiana Jones movie, right? It feels like a movie we should have got, uh, you know, somewhere between, you know, Kingdom of the, the not Kingdom of the Last Crusade and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. If there was now six Indiana Jones movies, I would have hoped that this movie would have been uh, the movie sandwiched in between them because it's it's cool. It's cool to see you know Harrison Ford doing his thing. Now the de aging, it's one of those things, right? The technology's not quite there. I think it's also the fact that it's like the uncanny valley thing. You recognize you know how something's supposed to look, especially like an actor like Harrison Ford. You know how he looked when he was this age, because you watch movies with him. So now when you're seeing it, you know, redone with, with, with visual effects, yeah, it looks pretty 
friggin' good, but it doesn't it doesn't look perfect in some scenes. In some scenes, there's some sequences that like even if it's a quick shot or something, that it looks crazy good. Like there's scenes, but then there's scenes that it looks a little wonky. Uh, it's not like flash effects wonky, but it's like, you know, it takes you a little bit like, because you, then your eyes are looking for it too. It's like the same thing with The Irishman. The first time I watched The Irishman, that whole movie, you know, it was filled with the aging and like, I was just sitting there looking at the aging. And then it wasn't until the second or the third time that I was able to like disconnect from that and watch the movie, like really just watch the movie and not think about it, the aging every five minutes. But it, I can't help it. You know, maybe the next time I watch it, uh, the, the dial of destiny, like I'll be able to take away more from the actual sequence, but it's, it's an awesome sequence. Otherwise I took that away from the first video. Like, it's awesome. It feels like Indiana Jones. It's cool. You get backstory. Uh, it also like, you know, when I was recently talking about kingdom of the crystal skull, there was the character played by Ray Winston and, you know, there was that thing where, you know, they're supposed to be old friends, but you really don't feel it because he's a new character it was cool because Toby Jones, who plays Basil Shaw, who plays the character of uh, Helena's father, uh, the character played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, comes in later. He's in these flashbacks. So you get a little bit of them right there. Whereas, so you, you have that kind of history, you know, uh, planted in there. So later on, when you meet her character, you understand uh, but I loved the opening. I thought the opening was great. It was action-packed. It was fun. It got me in the Indiana Jones mood, right? Great music by uh, John Williams as well. Throughout the whole movie, I've listened to the score. It came out yesterday on like Spotify and stuff like that. I think it's coming out physical in like July or August. But I've listened to that because I'm a nerd. <laughs> and I listen to John Williams scores as I drive home from work. And that score is great. And now seeing it in the movie, it's great. Especially that prologue scene. There's a lot of good music in there. Uh, obviously the classic, you know, Raiders marches in there from time to time, but they don't overdo it in the film. Uh, it's, it's used sparingly. Now, when we get down into the movie, um, Helena's character, I'm not going to get into like the plot details, right? Helena's character is basically, uh, looking for this dial that her father, you know, had Indiana Jones has a piece of it and trouble ensues, right? Uh, Mads Mikkelsen, who also, is in the flashback, uh, plays a Nazi, a former Nazi named Jurgen Voller, and he's fucking great. I mean, when is Mads Mikkelsen not great? You know, he's kind of doing the cliche Nazi thing. He's, you know, similar uh, to the, the villain in the in the in Raiders and stuff like that. And you know, he's doing his thing, but he's just an intimidating presence. He plays a great bad guy uh, in, in all the movies that he's played villains in, like Casino Royale and whatever. And so he works great in this world. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about Phoebe Waller-Bridge because she's like the biggest thing that a lot of people are talking about. As I said, I didn't get into rumors and s possible script things, but I heard whispers and stuff like that, that like, oh, they're replacing Indiana Jones and this and that. And I heard those things. Uh, you know, listen, I try to be fair with everything. You know, a lot of people too, they, they get very one-sided with things. Do I agree that sometimes... There may be a female character in a movie that's kind of, you know, uh, forcefully overpowering, uh, the, being overpowered and stuff like that. Or, you know, the Mary Sue thing. I'm not going to get into that. But, like, uh, yeah, sometimes they do that in, in movies. And it's it's sometimes a little annoying. It, but if it's, it has something to do with the story, it's fine. Uh, but I didn't feel that way about this character. Like, I didn't feel like they made her you know, uh, this, this character that's kind of besting Indiana Jones or something like that. I didn't feel like they put him to the back burner. There's been rumors about that. I didn't take that away from this movie. Uh, I think Indiana Jones is front and center in this movie and she's there too. She's kind of like a side character. She pops up, she does some stuff, she disappears, she comes back, but there's a lot of supporting characters in the movie. So I think she's on the same level as a lot of these uh, supporting characters. Uh, that that kind of come and go through this movie. Uh, does she help Indy? Yeah, sure. Indy helps her as well. So it's not like to get all that shit out of your head about like going into this movie and being like, oh, they are they doing this to fucking give her the franchise? That ain't it. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to talk about spoilers right away, but that is not it. That's not how the movie ends. 
Uh, it's not one of those, you know, we talked about the Shia LaBeouf Kingdom of the Crystal Skull thing when he was about to put on the hat and then Indy rips it away from him. This, there is never a moment that even comes close to that. So I'll say that, uh, still being spoiler free. But yeah, I overall, I like the movie. I think that for the most part, what is it, like two, two and a half hours or like two hours and 40 minutes, I think it is. And, like, the opening scene, as I said, 20, 25 minutes, goes by quick, great. Then they come up to present time or present times in this movie, which is uh, 68 or 69. And Indiana Jones, older man, you know, they kind of give some of the what he's going through. He's teaching. He's doing this. And it slows down a little bit. You know, it takes a dip. And then, you know, once the plot gets going and... uh Bridges' character comes in and, um, you know, kind of is the catalyst to get everything going. It, it starts picking up again. I didn't feel like it dragged or anything like that. Maybe you could have snipped a few minutes here and there out. Uh, maybe scenes went on too long. But for the most part, it works. Like the two hour, even the two hours, 35, whatever the hell I said it was. It, the pace goes. It's enjoyable. Uh, a lot of good supporting people in here. Uh, you know, obviously the actors I mentioned. Um, you know, Toby Jones is in the opening. He's good. Antonio Banderas pops up as a friend of Indiana Jones. He's not in the movie long, but, like, it's fucking Antonio Banderas. He's the fucking man. It's cool to see him in an Indiana Jones movie. It's cool to see him sharing screen time with, uh, Indiana, uh, you know, Harrison Ford and, and, you know, them being old friends yet again fucking indiana jones has a ton of friends and it's cool to see him in there then you get the return of sala himself right john Ray davies the classic indiana jones character and he's in it he's he's not in a ton of the movie you know he's not fucking running on the adventure with indy but he's in a nice uh couple of moments and he's enjoyable it's good to see him back uh i enjoyed him being back now as far as other bad guys boyd holbrook uh is another bad guy in this movie and you'd know him uh, probably from James Mangold's other film Logan where he's a bad guy in that and he's great he's a he's a good screen presence he kind of I was hoping he was going to be more uh, you know of a, a bigger character but I think it's just because he's kind of like a sidekick to Mads Mikkelsen's character so he kind of gets overshadowed there where obviously they're going to give him uh, you know Mads Mikkelsen the, the bigger spotlight there but overall the movie works I think it's fun. I think there's a nice amount of action set pieces. I think Harrison Ford's having fun with it. He's doing, you know, Indiana Jones justice, this older Indiana Jones. And that's a big theme of the movie that, like, I look forward to watching it again to, like, pick up on things like that. Because it's like, this is a different time for Indiana Jones. You know, the movie started in the 30s, set in the 30s. And then they went on from there, and now we're in 69, you know? And it just, they really are showing how the times have changed. And, like, Indiana Jones is kind of, like, forgotten a little bit. You know, he's kind of just, like, he's he's just nobody, nobody really cares. You know, there's a great moment that really shows that when uh, he's teaching at one moment in college. And he's kind of just, like, nobody's paying attention to him. He's 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 a relic in himself. He's become like the relic that I think somebody called him a fucking relic, right? In the fucking first one or second one, he's become that uh, where nobody cares. Nobody's really given him the respect. To the, to his time has kind of passed, and they play with that a little bit. And if anything, if he at times is like a little bit like inferior, you know, he he's fucking. 80, first of all, Harrison Ford's 80 years old, right, in real life, I think he's, the Indiana Jones character is supposed to be 70, but he's an old man, and they show that, and they make that realistic, too, um, you know, there's obviously action scenes, but he doesn't do anything, uh, I guess, later in the movie, listen, it's Indiana Jones movie, you gotta expect some crazy stuff, but, like, they keep it in somewhat the realm of, of possibility, until the, until the third act, you know, but, he he talked about that at one moment too like he's climbing something and he's like I'm older and blah 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 he beat up you know so I think it works well I think it's realistic I think it the, the character has a little bit more depth than the last time we saw him in Kingdom of Crystal Skull uh, you know they kind of give him a little bit more emotional weight 
And I enjoyed that because as I said in like The Last Crusade, which I said is my favorite Indiana Jones movie, I think that the thing that elevates it is the emotional relationship and the emotional stakes between Indy and Sean Connery, uh, his father, uh, Henry Jones Sr. So I like when there's more emotion. As I said, there's a little more. It kind of gets away at times. I think there's there's so much going on with the you know back and forth of this plot that like somewhere in the middle it becomes a little bit a little bit all over the place and you're kind of like all right what do we get we get focused but there is a, a nice amount of action there's a nice amount of you know giggle stuff it's not hilarious as i said in the last uh, crusade episode last crusade is the funniest indiana jones movie uh and and this isn't as funny as last crusade but when you go back to Raiders, Raiders isn't like a fucking hilarious movie. Raiders, you're not laughing a mile a minute or anything like that. So it, it goes back to sort of that tone where it's not goofy, a little more serious. And um, yeah, the third act, and you've probably heard this if you've listened to anybody talk about this, it gets it goes a little bananas. Um, when I get spoilers in a few minutes, I'll talk about that. But it gets a little bananas, kind of like I was expecting some stuff because you always got to expect it. You know, Indiana Jones, people want to say things about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and the aliens. and It's all been crazy stuff is always done in the Indiana Jones movies. Let's face it, right? Uh, As I said, melting face, all that stuff. All the craziness has already happened in the Indiana Jones movies. So this one takes it a little bit crazier. Um, You know, you got to kind of rock with it. I think it was kind of, it's like jarring at times. And, uh, it's one of those things that I, you know, I think my brain was picturing other things. And then when the things happened that they were showing you, I wasn't on board with all the, all of them. But I think in a second viewing, when I know it's coming, I could just kind of focus on the story, as I said earlier. But yeah, overall, I like this movie. I think it's, um, a good Indiana Jones movie. We're never going to hit the top tier Indiana Jones movies. It was never going to happen. It wasn't in the cards. I know James Mangold's uh, an awesome director. He's very talented. I I love most of his movies. But even with him, you're never going to recapture the magic of those original three Indiana Jones movies. Never going to do it. Especially Raiders, especially Last Crusade, and Temple. You're, You're never going to capture it. That's that's a burden that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull faced. That's a burden that, you know, the sequel trilogy faced from Star Wars, the prequel trilogy faced from Star Wars. Uh, it, it's it's just not possible. There's too much tied in to your love of, of these franchises and these movies. And now, in this case, particularly Indiana Jones, uh, Raiders is magic, you know, and, and you're not going to recapture that. So... Is it a great Indiana Jones movie? No. It's not It's not the great ones. But as far as if I was going to rank them, Last Crusade, my opinion. Raiders, Temple of Doom, Dial of Destiny, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That's my ranking of the, the five uh, full-length, complete Indiana Jones movies. That's my ranking of them. Because there's a lot of moments in here that make this feel a little bit more like an Indiana Jones movie rather than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, but Kingdom of the Crystal Skull has, a, a, you know, it has more laughs, but at times it gets a little bit more goofy. And listen, I fucking talked about the monkey swinging scene in that movie. It kills it kills a lot of it for me. But yeah, there's there's no monkey swinging scene in this, thank God. So we, we are lucky to have that. But overall, I like this movie. I recommend going to see it if you're an Indiana Jones fan. Is it the best ending that Indiana Jones as a, as a character could have had? No. It, it the, What they do, I think, is, is nice and it's sweet and I think it works. But I, And I think it's a good farewell to the character that we've, we've had, as I said, for all these years. So I enjoyed it. I recommend it. Uh, some people aren't going to like it. I could, I could tell... I could, there's things in it that I'm going to be, especially the third act, which momentarily we'll get into if you're going to stick with spoilers. Um, but I know there's going to be people that don't love it, 
But I also don't think those people could say it's worse than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Like, I can't sit there and, yet again, gotta stress, don't hate Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But, like, I, I don't know. Could you stress that this movie's worse than that? No. It, it fits somewhere nicely in between that and um, Temple of Doom to me. So it's enjoyable. Harrison Ford's nice to see him. And that's the thing, like... I just, I was, t- I was talking to my wife before we saw the movie, and I was just geeking out and getting excited. I was wearing my, I wore my fedora hat to the movies because I'm a child, and I wore my Raiders of the Lost Ark shirt, and she wore her Temple of Doom shirt. And I said, I just am happy that there's one more Indiana Jones. You know, that Harrison Ford, at fucking 80 years old, has made another Indiana Jones movie. I get to see that character one more time. He's an iconic character. It's no different to me than, like, you know, Stallone playing Rocky. That Like, do I love every Rocky? Do I think every Rocky, uh, you know, is the greatest movie in the world? No, I I don't. Uh, Same thing with, like, Rambo for him. Like, But, like, it's nice to see him play a character. Uh, Even the shittier Terminator uh, series uh, films, you know, when Arnold comes back, it's great to see Arnold. And now, especially with this Indiana Jones, that it's the last time we're going to see him. It's that's it. He's eighty. It's not happening. Look at the what happened with the last two. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull took nineteen years, almost twenty years, to get made after Last Crusade. This one took fifteen years after Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Even if they were like, "All right, we're gonna do it," it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna unless they put a rush on it, unless they change their mind. If this movie made so much money, which it's probably going to have a mo- modest box office, but I don't think it's going to kill it. Where they're going to be, we got to make another one. We'll see what they do. Uh, if they kind of try to do something else with the franchise later, maybe with the short round thing or whoever, we'll see. Uh, an animated thing will be cool. Who knows? We'll see what Disney has up their sleeves to keep making money off the Indiana Jones franchise. But Harrison Ford's done. He said it. They've said it. It's that's it. And he's old. Uh, unfortunately, the guy's old. Uh, but I'm I, I'm glad I got to see this. So I recommend, as I said, if you're an Indiana Jones fan, go see it. Give it a chance. Try not to read anything. Go in spoiler-free. And on that note, if you're going to go in spoiler-free, now is the time to stop listening. Because I'm going to talk about spoilers. Uh, so if you're going to see the movie, this is my warning. I like to give a little bit of time. I check my watch. I'm looking around. I'm seeing if anybody's still here. You still here? You still here? All right, so you're going to get movie spoiled. All right, let's get the spoilers. So the movie begins, as I said, with um, the CGI stuff. And you get, you know, the backstory with the Dial of Destiny. And, you know, they allude throughout the whole movie what this dial does, you know. And then you realize that it's essentially a time machine. Uh, you know, Mads Mikkelsen's character wants it because he wants to go back in time and he wants to fucking win the war and all that, you know, cliche shit. Um, but yeah, the, oh, but as I said, the fucking, there's scenes like that with that opening sequence that his face looks a little wonky, but there was a couple scenes that look fucking awesome. And it almost made me want like, oh man, there was a couple scenes that I was like, shit, like it would have been cool if they would have just did a full, you know, Indiana Jones in the 40s movie, you know, younger Indiana Jones is crazy. Like, they honestly could still do that. Like, if Harrison Ford, like, gave his permission, which I don't want to live in the world when stuff like this happens, but if Harrison Ford gave his permission, like, signed his life away and his likeness, and was like, oh, yeah, you could do another six Indiana Jones movies with, like, a computer de aged version of me, like, I don't know. I'd probably watch it because it's, it's like, it, you're basically doing that in that opening scene, and when you see it, it's fucking, it works for the most part. Uh, but yeah, so the, the thing, one of the big things was Shia LaBeouf, right? His character of Mutt Williams wasn't really a loved character. I didn't hate him in that movie. Uh, but what were they going to do with him? Uh, and I had heard a rumor. I don't know. I stumbled across it. I wasn't seeking out spoilers, but I had stumbled across it that they were killing him off. They were going to, like, say he was dead. You know, at one point, like, when the movie started getting cast and stuff, and, like, um, boy, as I said, Boyd uh, Holbrook, who plays the Nazi, when he was cast at one point, I was like, I wonder if they're, like, recasting Mutt before I knew who he was. And 
you know, obviously they don't really look the same, but I, you know, I was saying maybe they would do something like that because Shia LaBeouf shit talk to the franchise and stuff like that. But that's not the case. They do kill Shia LaBeouf off. They kind of, um, they do it in a funny way where it's like they're watching a news report uh, when Indiana Jones is uh, wanted. And, like, they said, oh, his son recently passed away. They say it. And then I was like, all right, well, they, they got to do more than that, right? Uh, and then later on, he talks to uh, Helena, and he's like, oh, if I, would, if I could use the dial, I would go back in time and stop my son from going to the war. I would tell him he, he died, and it ruined me and his mother's relationship. Nice, sweet scene. Harrison Ford giving some emotion. Uh, you know, the heart story, yet again, adds a little bit more depth to the character. And that's the thing about Indiana Jones, when we when we catch up with him in the, the modern time, the modern setting, he is a fucking broken old man, right? He's drinking all the time, he's in his underwear, and basically naked, yelling at people for putting the Beatles music loud. And he's just grumpy, you know, because his son died, his wife left him, he's kind of in a bad place. And, uh, you know... That I like that aspect of it. I think it's one of those things where, like, a character like Mutt Williams, who not a lot of people liked, and Shia LaBeouf did whatever he did in real life that did the reason he's not in this movie, and um, they were able to take that. And it, yeah, it could be looked at like, oh, it's cheap, they just killed him off, but I think that was smart because it gave Indy more depth. You know, it gave him a little bit more uh, of an uh, emotional problem. And it gave him something he was going through. And I like that they did that. Uh, as I said, Helen, Helena, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Phoebe Waller, is it Bridger? I always forget. Is it Bridger? or Because it's Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Uh, she, she works. You know, she's not a particularly memorable character or something like that. But she works for the scene she's in. I, I was hoping that she was going to bring a little bit more uh, oomph to the role, and like you know, but she's there. She's doing a thing. I didn't hate her. They don't. They don't do anything like fucking. Oh, we're passing the torch, or we're making a Mary Sue. As I said, they don't. They don't do that. It's not like oh, jamming it down your throat. There's the moment towards the end where she's going to save Indy, but he saves her. You know, when the bugs get all over her and the fucking tomb, she's screaming and stuff like that. It's not like they did that. Uh, oh, we got to make her fucking indestructible. So I didn't get those vibes. I didn't mind that uh, relationship they had either. It was, you know, there's another flashback with uh, her father's character where it's like years later and like Harrison Ford's a little bit more aged. He got the gray hair and that shit looked good because that was like a little bit. He was, like, supposed to be a little bit younger, I guess, than you'd say maybe he was in Crystal Skull. So it was somewhat, like, recent. They, they weren't aging him back 40 years. So that one looked a lot better as far as the de I like those little flashbacks. They added the depth. As I said, it was like another Indiana Jones movie, like a little mini Indiana Jones movie. All that stuff worked. Um, and now we'll get into the, the banana stuff. So, like... Listen, the Dial of Destiny, they alluded to it in the trailers. You could figure it out. It's basically a time machine, right? And it is fucking one of those things. Like, how is this going to work? Is this going to fit into, uh, you know, an Indiana Jones <laughs> movie? Is that, is that going to work? I mean, how are they going to do it? And when they were going back in time, because then they're going back in time in the plane, and Indy realizes that, Oh shit! This fucking uh, you you miscalculated, and we're not going back to uh, you know 1939 or wherever you wanted to go back to. We don't know where we're going back to. Uh, I was like, I didn't know what to fucking expect. I was getting all excited. I was like, Oh, what the fuck is this gonna be? And um, I was almost picturing for a minute that like they were gonna be back and like fucking dinosaurs like I don't know Steven Spielberg's fucking Jurassic Park I was thinking that because I was like they're gonna go batshit crazy and I'm glad they didn't go that route uh you know they go back to uh the Roman uh war Archmedes whatever the hell his name is and he's there it's a little weird it gets a little weird like I said you're I understand the the gesture 
um, that, you know, of it all, like, you know, Indiana Jones has always studied relics and artifacts and history, and now he's in history, so to put him in that, it's like, oh my god, he must be fucking, he's like all, like, amazed by it and stuff like that, but I don't know, it, it, it was a little weird, it was a little weird seeing him in time, back in time, and then he wants to fucking stay, and I'm like, oh no, like, are they gonna... Are they going to fucking keep him in here? Like, how is this going to work? Because then I was picturing, like, he was going to go and save Mutt at one point. Like, he was going to go do what he said he was going to do. But then I also knew, like, the real-life drama. Like, all right, Shia LaBeouf's probably not in this movie. But when he was saying that he was going to stay, I was kind of like, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't want him to stay in the past. What, are that, what does that going to mean? What does that mean for the consequences of of the of the the timeline. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. I'm gonna do the Austin Powers thing when he's talking about time machine, uh, the time traveling rules with Basil. In uh, what is the second? The Spy Who Shagged Me. And he's like, Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. Oh, it was that gold member. I don't even remember. Anyway, that's kind of how I felt because I was like, Well, how is this gonna? What is it gonna change? You know, if Indiana Jones is stuck in the past, and then I don't know what the hell. But luckily, they don't do that. Now the way he, they don't do that is Phoebe Waller-Bridge punches him in the face and knocks him out. Uh, Didn't really love it. I didn't really love it for a couple of reasons. I mean, the main reason is, like, they kind of... They're back in time. Could we, like, like face the gravity of the situation that they're back in time at this point and Indiana Jones saying he wants to stay and all this shit? And then she punches him in the face and, like, he wakes up back in his room And it's like, I don't know, like, the whole... I would have rather seen him physically go back, you know. I I don't know. Maybe it feels like there was a scene maybe cut or they cut it out of the script or something like that. It just feels a little cheap when he just wakes up. Then you're almost questioning, did I just watch, like, Indiana Jones' dream? Because, you know, then, spoiler, spoiler, obviously Karen Allen as Marion comes in and... uh you know, shares a nice moment with Indy, but like, I was almost thinking like, uh, are they, are they not divorced? Did, did, I was almost expecting like, cause then a couple of people start working in, like Sala starts walking in and his fucking 28 grandkids, whoever they are. And I was almost picturing like Shia LaBeouf coming in with the fucking hair comb and the leather jacket and be like, Hey dad, I, I, at that point I didn't know what to expect. And I was kind it just kind of was a little, you go through so many different extremes at that moment, whether he's, you know, he's in the past or going back to the future. Did I just do that on purpose? <laughs> but, um, and then, you know, Matt Mickelson character's dead and you're like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then it's just like the punch and then he wakes up and then Marion's there. and It just felt a little rushed. I don't think it was like wrapped, you know, as neatly as I wanted it to be. I wanted there to be a little bit more closure before you know it. They're, uh, you know, kissing and they're doing the call back to Raiders with the, Oh, it doesn't hurt here. It doesn't hurt here. And I thought that was nice. I thought that was a nice moment, but it just, it felt a little rushed. And then of course you see the last shot of the hat and he pulls it in. And I thought that was nice, but would have probably liked the tighter ending as far as, uh, you know, the, the the movie went and this is the end of Indiana Jones. I didn't hate, you know, that he went back in history and stuff like that. And I think it'll sit with me better uh, on different, you know, uh, multiple viewings. But could have been a little cleaner of an ending. We could have got him coming back, maybe reaching out to Marion, having her in it for a little bit more. But then at that point, then the movie's three hours. So maybe there was some stuff cut. But I can't stress that it feels a little bit cheap to me. I did like seeing her. That was one of the worst kept secrets too because there was a poster released and her name was on it. I don't know what fucking bozo did that. Also, she was at the premieres recently and stuff. And yeah, they do honor like legacy characters sometimes at premieres. But like you knew she was in this movie because they got married in the last one. There was going to be some talk about her. Uh, and then once she started popping up, like as, as I said, at premieres and stuff, you knew she was going to be in this film. So she works well. It's fun to see her. And it's fun to, I guess, give Indiana a sort of happy ending. I mean, Mutt Williams is still dead, though. Like in this world, you know, his son, Shia LaBeouf, is still fucking dead. He didn't go back in time and go save him. But time travel is always a fucking funny thing in movies. And especially in an Indiana Jones movie, it's... 
it feels a little bit out of place, but as I said, like, we've done all the crazy shit in Indiana Jones movies, from aliens and melting faces, and it is what it is at this point. Uh, but I don't know. You know, he does what's more unrealistic, time traveling or the fact that an 80-year-old man, like, parachuted out of a plane. I don't know. I don't know, but it, it, it works for the most part. I didn't love the ending, but I, I did like this movie. I will be seeing it again. Uh, I'm curious to see what other people think now that, like, the mainstream audiences are seeing. It's not just credits. I'm curious if some of the fucking people that... I want to go read what these, like, leak things were now that I've seen the movie because I think they were just fucking insane. You know, there's a lot of... It's, it's repeated constantly, but the internet becomes kind of like this fucking... Uh, just box this endless capsule of hate and anger and just whining and it's like everything that comes out somebody's got something to say and everything like nobody's it's funny because part of me I, I, I sometimes think I'm a pessimist and at times but then when push comes to shove I know I'm like an optimist and I could base that essentially on my movie going I could just base it. It just speaks volumes because I go into movies with a positive attitude. I try to be like, oh, this is going to be good. And if it's not that good, I'm like, ah, you know, even even Flash. I mean, I don't want to fucking start talking about the Flash again. I've seen it twice. I had two episodes where I talked about it. Now that it's, the dust has settled, I like the Flash. I enjoyed it. I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. The weakest point of that movie, and I talked about that in the podcast, is the fucking CGI. I like the movie, though. I, I Is it the best movie in the world? No. It's similar to this movie in, in that aspect. Like, is it the best? No. But it's a fun movie. It's enjoyable. You check your mind at the door. You, that's it. It's not, you're not going to, it's not going to change your life. And that's the thing with movies. Like, what do you, what do you expect from a movie sometimes? And getting back to, like, this is never going to live up to the originals. That same, uh, you know, mentality. But, like, what are you, are you looking for this movie to change your life? Because it's not going to. If, if Raiders changed your life when you watched it when you were a kid, that's great. But this film isn't going to. This is just another continuing adventure, and that's fine. Not every movie has to change your life. You don't have to be blown away by every movie. Could it have been a little bit have a better Indiana Jones? Sure. But it's good enough to me, and that's all that matters. But that's the podcast. Uh, as I said, check out the other episodes. I did the other four Indiana Jones. Can't stress that enough. Now's the time to recap on those and uh let me know what you think about that if this is the first time you listen to the podcast welcome this is how it goes i do some wild stuff like this do some older movies newer movies talk about movies and all that fun shit um like subscribe rate review on itunes spotify show your support i appreciate it however that works also check me out on tiktok twitter and instagram at dom solo reels and uh probably have a new episode up sometime next week but that's it guys and gals thanks for listening and have a good night